Welcome to Backpacker Radio, presented by The Trek. Today is November 13th, World Kindness Day. Aw, that's nice. I am your co-host, Zach Badger Davis. Sitting to my right is... I am Juliana Chauncey, a.k.a. Chaunce. Reminders, yes. Uh, we have the deets, finally, for our hiker holiday meetup extravaganza, Palooza Supreme. A thon. Yes. Uh, this will take place, whatever I said previously, disregard that because I think a lot of the details have changed. You guys don't care about the reasons why. But this is going down on December 1st at Improper City in Denver, in Denver, not Golden, from 5.30 to 8 p.m. This will be co-hosted by Backpacker Radio slash The Trek and the CDTC, which means it'll be a fundraiser for them. We're going to have some sweet raffles or as they say, door prizes. I had to look that up. Apparently that's the uh, vernacular for raffle prizes nowadays. Good hangs, solid vibes, mems, what else? Carnival barking. Carnival, but yeah. Sounds like there will be some of that happening. Give at least four drinks a chance and she will stand on a chair and yell at you. I haven't, I haven't stood on a chair and yelled at Improper City yet, which is... Oh, yeah. Something that I'm excited to do. Yeah, let's see if they welcome us back after. December 1st at 5.30 p.m. Um, a couple other things quickly. One is if you're through hiking in 2024 and you want your journey featured on the trek, we are currently accepting blogger applications. Head to the link in the show notes. Lastly, uh, this is the time of the year where we will likely be adding a new editorial intern to the team. This is a highly coveted position. We get lots of people reaching out for this. So if you're listening to this and you've got some serious editorial chops and you like long distance backpacking, uh, head to the link in the show notes. Oh, also we are still selling our awesome vintage backpacker radio tees. We've got, gotten some nice compliments on them. Yes, we have. Um, they look like Save the Bell, Save by the Bell um, goes outdoors. Yeah. Or if you're slightly older, Miami Vice. If you're my age, both are sufficient. Yeah, I also think if you saw the Barbie movie, um, this would be like that in the form of a shirt and blue. Mm. There is pink hints. There's um, flavors of pink in there. But it's it's I could see it being worn as like a Ken costume. Yeah, I saw a couple people recommend or uh, ask for us to turn these into sun hoodies, which just gotta, I saw that too. Got to figure out. Where how do we do find that. a manufacturer? That's a good question, but maybe someday. Okay. Well, if you uh, manufacture sun hoodies and you're listening to this, yeah, slide in our DMs. Yes. Uh, last thing is if you want to support the show and you want some additional Backpacker Radio content, head on over to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash Backpacker Radio, where we release a new episode the first Wednesday of every month. This current month's episode was... A gift guide. Um, we went through big ticket and small ticket items that you can either gift or be gifted in the holiday season. Um, things that we've loved having as hikers and regular um, humans and as well as things that we wouldn't want or like you know some things to avoid if you want to give that thoughtful gift um, to a hiker but also don't want to give them something that they're gonna smile and say thank you for and then actually never use yes uh, we to the non backpacking gift recommendations I tried my hardest to not make it too dad centric and I think I failed this will be a great one for anyone who wants to gift something to a hiker or who really likes being in the kitchen yes <laughs> leave it at that <laughs> <laughs> or is training to be the all time dad yeah okay we'll leave it at that uh, no more beating around the bush let's get right to today's interview with Brady Gillenfeld we'll figure out how badly I butchered that pretty soon we are joined by today's guest, Brady Geilenfeld, which I nailed the first time, I'm pretty sure. I'm sure the tape will say otherwise, who hiked the Colorado Trail this year in part to inspire people who are deaf or hard of hearing, that they are not limited by their abilities. Brady, thank you so much for joining us here on Backpacker Radio. Hey, it's great to be here. Yeah, can we swing the mic a little bit closer your way? We're going to put that, yeah. like, there we go. about that far from your okay. mouth. How does that sound? Good. That sounds awesome. The closer, the better. You can't be too close. Oh. Yeah. Tip, yeah, I would move yourself closer rather than it close. Yeah. Typically, yeah. we do all this stuff before we hit record, but we're we're winging it here today. He brought us food. He we got distracted, yeah. and we brought him food. Yeah. And it was a food exchange. Let's start there. Let's give a plug to this is your folks' place, uh, the Harvest General Store in Iowa, right? Yes, in Iowa. Yeah, they uh, 
they just do trade shows and stuff right now and they have a facebook page but i mean really yeah they just go around doing those trade shows they love it yeah so we're about to bust open there was a wide variety of goodies in this box chance went with her top option who currently stabbing it open with her <laughs> the edge of her glasses <laughs> What do we have here, Chance? Um, this seemed the most on brand for us, and this is freeze dried gummy worms. I personally have been getting a lot of like algorithm on socials showing me people freeze drying Skittles, gummies, things like that. And so this is right up my um, current algorithm. Yeah. They look like Cheetos. It, it, it looks unique. I, and I was unaware of freeze drying candy up until about 10 minutes ago. So. Very excited to learn about the this wild world. I will say the best part about this is seeing people's reaction eating this for the first time. ASMR. Flavors. It tastes like texture aside. It tastes just like a gummy worm. It tastes like jello. This is very interesting. Push it against the top of your mouth. Like, I don't like chewing these things. I like pushing them against the top of my mouth and letting them melt. If you just push it with your tongue against the top of your mouth, it does it taste a little bit like jello. I'm, this is requiring a lot of unlearning because I'm expecting candy, but. All right, take the red and push it against the roof of your mouth. I still got this. It's red jello. This is fantastic. I'm going to try the blue side now. I think I'm liking it more with each bite. The first one was a little bit of an exploration for me. <laughs> I will say out of all the options, the gummy worms are not my favorite. What's your go-to? My go-to is definitely the Skittles. Skittles? Like the, they do like the wild berry Skittles and like the, those ones are really good. The smoothie ones are Maybe awesome. we'll bust those out halfway through. Yeah, we could do that. Um, I don't hate this. I feel like this, I'm setting myself up here. <laughs> Let's follow through. Kind of reminds me of corn dogs. In that, corn this is important. In that, when I take a bite of a corn dog, I don't know if I like want to continue that journey. <laughs> but then after it sits there for a moment, I'm like, I need another bite. <laughs> you know, like after you've like you've sat there and you're like, where's that taste? I want that taste back. I feel like I could get a lot of miles out of these. It's the perfect intersection between candy and chips. Like it has like a hearty chip texture to it. Very crunchy, as you could hear <laughs> through the mics. <laughs> uh, but it still tastes exactly like the flavor is exactly what you'd expect yeah. from a gummy worm. It's very like, interesting. I've never, I've never even had anything approximate to what I just put in my mouth. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like these would be good, like in shots. Oh, like, uh, sure, yeah. Like you can make Here, some you want to get the party started? Me saying, like, shots are out for the last segment. Yeah. Um. Cool. These are these are fun. Okay. Let's talk about some backpacking <laughs> stuff. So the intro is short because that is essentially what we know about your journey, and I'm assuming the bulk of the conversation for today. So give us the background, because um, we've been chatting here for the last 10, 15 minutes or so, mm -hmm. and uh, the conversation has been – very easy. I wouldn't expect that you were hard of hearing. So yeah. give us your level of, or introduce your level of deafness and maybe any tech that's involved. And I guess just give us the full background. Yeah, I can give you the full rundown. Yeah. I mean, I was um, born um, with CMV. That's a congenital men something virus. It's a very long word. I can, I always butcher it, but um, anyway, so I was born with that. Um, and that basically meant that I could have been deaf, could have been blind, could have been mm -hmm anything. Um, so it could have been missing a leg. Um, so it turns out that I was just deaf. And so my mom, you know, they kind of knew what to look for since, uh, they had tested for CMV, um, when my mom was pregnant with me. Cause so she was a nurse and she got pregnant. I mean, well, she didn't get pregnant by one of her patients. She got, <laughs> she got CMV from one of her patients. Oh. Um, and so she just kept on doing what she was doing. Um, and so they kind of knew what to look for. Um, and so I was born and I, past a newborn hearing screen and at the time the newborn hearing screen was just you look at the baby and you like scream at it and see if it reacts <laughs> like any baby's gonna <laughs> pass a newborn hearing screen so um is that because the volume is loud enough that even if they are hard of hearing it's still reaching a decibel that they can perceive yeah that they register it basically yeah um and that's kind of what they were basing it off of at the time you know mm -hmm. i was born in 2000 you know i mean it was not that long ago right you know um, and so, yeah, I slept through my first fireworks and my parents were like, well, no newborn baby is going to sleep through fireworks. And so 
they like brought me home and sat me down in the living room and banged a bunch of pots and pans in front of my face and i didn't do anything hmm. <laughs> didn't react and so they're like yeah we have a deaf baby and so they brought me back and i uh you know. Were they that calm about it? <laughs> no, <laughs> guaranteed not. <laughs> yeah. I know my mom, <laughs> but yeah, they probably sprinted to the hospital. Sure, um, but uh, yeah, so they did that, and then I, you know, did a couple of hearing screens, and I would pass them again. But then they finally did a sedated one, um, where I was like hooked up to a machine, um, and then that showed that I was fully deaf. Hmm. Um, and so I got my first cochlear implant when I was five, when I was thirteen months old, and my second one when I was five years old. Before you go too far, because yeah. I'm going to have questions cover my questions. I just know it. Yeah. How did your mom get CMV? Like, how does it get transmitted? Um, just through contact. Um, she was working on a patient. Uh, she's an ER nurse. Um, and, yeah, I think it was just through contact of, um, I think it was bodily fluids. Um, and so, basically, if you're pregnant and you, have C- and you get CMV, then it just goes directly to the child. So, she was pregnant when she got it? Yeah. It's not like she could get it and then she goes deaf yeah, yeah no, that can happen or no that can, no oh, that can't. no okay <laughs> Woo, thank god yeah no that would not be the case so okay. it just it went directly to me basically and she didn't see any of the um repercussions of cmv hmm. and so i still have it and i still live with it but i can't transmit it to anybody huh. um and so it's dormant i guess um did, did she the- know at the time that she contract contracted cmv she didn't know right away because the doctor came in and was like, hey, this patient has CMV. And my mom was like, well, I guarantee I already have it mm. now since I've already been working with the patient. And so, mm. How could the patient give it to your mom, but you can't give it to someone else? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I think it's because it really develops predominantly when you're in the womb versus like, you know, you get it in the womb and it's in that development stages. Um, I'm not a doctor, so, <laughs> but um, <laughs> that's my um, interpretation of it, I okay. guess. Um, and so, yeah, it just that means I'm, you know, immunocompromised. I um, everything else that comes along with being deaf, I can get into that in a second. But mm. um, yeah, that's about it with the CMV. Were your parents on the lookout for? Were they on high alert, knowing that she had contracted CMV when she was pregnant? thinking that there was a high likelihood that something could have gone awry? Yeah. I mean, they, the doctors literally had, like, percentages of the different types of disabilities that I could have. Hmm. And so they had no idea. Um, and so when I was born and I was just, you know, looked normal, you know, they were like, wow, that's amazing. That's a miracle. And so um, that was a really cool experience for them to go through. And then also, you know, in a way, it was kind of one of the best of the worst situations. Hmm. Let me know if this sounds insensitive, because for, for me, it's purely curious, but mm-hmm. I could see how this might not come out how I want it to. Knowing the array of different things that could have happened, are you, would you trade being deaf for a different option? Or do you think that like, it's a really manageable, like, I don't know, like, would you mm-hmm. trade it? I don't think so. I actually don't think I would trade it for anything, because uh, for one, I take them out when I sleep, you know, like nothing wakes me up noise wise you know i mean i guess i'm sensitive to vibrations Hmm. um that's actually how i wake up every day is my bed shakes and it like connects to my alarm Hmm. um and yeah when i have a headache i can just take them out don't have to deal with anything don't have to listen to anything Hmm. so i mean there are some perks of it um i wouldn't change it now have you ever taken them out in a relationship when someone's like (laughs) mad at you i have but that didn't go over very well That's amazing. That's the <laughs> ultimate talk to the hand. Yeah. <laughs> Nodding along. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you mentioned that you wake up to an alarm that vibrates. Is this like a alarm specifically for peop- for deaf people? Yeah. 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 Actually, there's. I've had friends buy it just because they're heavy sleepers. I huh. am. A he- I, you caught my interest when you said the bed vibrates. Yeah. It's just like a little toggle thing. I don't know. It's probably like three and a half, four inches in diameter. And like you just put it underneath your mattress and it's just like it's a sonic vibrator. Yeah. Mm. It feels like a good April Fool's joke for Gary. <laughs> so, I don't know how to phrase this question. So you got the, the your first cochlear implant when you said when you were 13 months old. Yes. And then the second one when you were five. Yes. Do you know how well the implant approximates 
normal human hearing? Like, are you functioning at 100% of what the average person functions at? Is it yeah. 75%? Can you, like, what is that? What is it supposed to approximate? Yeah, I mean, they basically say that uh, I hear 15,000 tones and you guys hear 30,000 tones. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's more on a tonal level, but um, I well, guess. I don't even know what does that mean? Like, just in terms of different arrays of frequencies like yeah. if you're listening to music are you hearing half as much of the range as somebody yeah. else kind of it's more like along the lines of you know i can't hear like white noise or mm. like the i guess it's the range of frequencies that i can hear okay so like if it's super deep or like a whale call um i prob that's probably not in my range to be able to hear got it or if it's like a dog whistle i know no, most people can't hear that mm. but um, something along those high frequencies I can't hear. Got it. So there's like that specific range. Mm -hmm. We used to make that our cell phone ringtone in, I would say ninth grade. Cause there a, was a dog whistle. It was a high pitched frequency. Cause the age that your teachers are like, you start to not be able uh, to hear those high sounds, yeah. but when you're super young, you can. And I thought so you were going to say you knew that the phone was ringing because the dogs were barking. No, no, no. People would set their phones to it because the teachers couldn't hear it. That's funny. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so you hear at half the frequencies of the average human hearing, but for like this conversation, are you hearing everything perfectly normal? I mean, as normal as I can yeah. know, tell. Uh, um, I, I was going to say, because <laughs> like I said, I, I haven't missed a beat. The conversation hasn't missed a beat since you walked in here. And uh, I, I didn't know what to expect. And yeah. to see that y your hearing functions at such a high level is just such a pat on the back to yeah. uh, what we're able to achieve with Western medicine and all the technology and everything. If you take out the implants, mm -hmm. can you like not hear at all? Zip, nothing. How do they how do they make that work? I know you're not a doctor. We've established this, but <laughs> how do they make that work? Like, how do they just yeah. create something where there's nothing? Here, I can. I know the people listening can't actually see this, but so I mean, what I have here is a, it's a cochlear implant. So I took my left side off, um, and so right now I can't hear anything on my left side. Um, and so this part that kind of twists off, that's the battery. And so there's a processor that basically takes sound. Um, and it's basically like a, a camera microphone. And so you know how when you take a video and you like hear the wind, like it's like, whoosh, and it's annoying, right? I hear that. And mm -hmm. so it's basically kind of like just a camera mic, but then it, tr this processor, um, basically transfers those sound waves into electrodes, which are just little electrical pulses. And that goes through a magnet that's actually inside my head and that magnet um, has a coil that runs through the cochlea. And so since my deafness comes from like not being able to hear, right? So basically what I'm getting at is I don't have the actual like hairs in the cochlea that stimulate the auditory nerve like you guys do. And so that coil that runs through the cochlea like stimulates it with those electrodes like it would for you guys with those hairs. Two part question. One, based on what you just said if i were to put that on it wouldn't like i wouldn't hear anything crazy because i don't have the part inside right no. yeah nothing would happen do you watch harry potter oh i love it the second time i've done this zach's out of this conversation <laughs> is this like fred's like extendable ears like could you take the implant and put it under like a door somewhere and go away and it would still go to the part in your head and you could hear really good like can you eavesdrop on people with it yeah actually if i click on my phone it connects to my phone Wow. And I can turn on live listen, and then it just like connects right to my CIs, and whatever's going through the microphone on the phone it goes directly to my CI. So I could set my phone on this table, go to the other room, and I'd hear everything you guys are saying. I feel like this is a superpower. <laughs> <laughs> like this is like CIA shit. Yeah, <laughs> I do think that's a feature you could do with your phone as well. And like that's not as cool. I'm not hearing <laughs> it in my head. True. You have to use the AirPod. So yeah, I guess being able to disguise it, but mm -hmm. I, I am blown away by the tech of that. Just hearing your explanation of it and the fact that you're able to function totally normally with it yeah. is, is amazing. Like, do you feel very blessed that this technology, because how long has this been around? I mean, it, there were people who were getting implanted, you know, in the eighties and nineties, but mm. you know, the technology just wasn't there. Um, you know, I was one of the youngest in Iowa to be implanted. And so this was, it was basically right when the FDA approved it. Like hmm. my mom was on the gun. She went for it. Yeah. Well, she sounds like she's on top of her stuff based on the testing and everything alone. Yeah. And the dehydrated candy. And the dehydrated candy. Or freeze-dried candy, sorry. <laughs> <Step down. laughs> um, 
Wow. So yeah. did you ever have to learn ASL or was it just, I'm good with these? Yeah, I did ASL for a little bit. Um, I did it until, I don't know, probably I was roughly kindergarten age. Hmm. And I stopped because I did auditory verbal therapy. And they, were, they actually went to the level to where like my audiologist, well, my auditory verbal therapist, I guess, would make me sit on my hands so that like I wouldn't use my hands to talk. And I would just wanted to talk anyway. Like I just start, stopped using th- sign language. Hmm. And my parents were like, well, why are we going to invest the time in learning sign language when he just wants to talk? Yeah. You know, so. So the videos that everyone has seen via social media, always a tearjerker when deaf people get an operation where they can hear like their spouse or their parent or whatever it might be for the first time. Mm -hmm. Is that the operation that they're getting the cochlear implant? Yeah. Most of the time. Yeah. Um, It's so cochlear implant is that like cochlear is a brand. There can be other brands that they do. So there's like Advanced Bionic, and that's another popular one. Um, a few other ones that aren't as popular, but Cochlear is definitely like the main brand. Hmm. If someone can't hear and they mainly communicate using ASL, it, are they someone who hasn't tried a Cochlear implant yet, or do they not work on certain types of deafness? Yeah, it depends on how you become deaf. That's kind of why I, I, you know, stuttered there for a second when I said, you know, my deafness comes from CMB, um, because if you have damage of the auditory nerve, then the cochlear implant's not going to work at all, um, because that auditory nerve has to be able to sense that there's stuff in the cochlea, um, and so there's there are people who have damaged auditory nerves and they're just kind of out of luck. Hmm. Huh. So, I don't know. I assume this is true, but this is something that I'm citing as an internet fact that when somebody loses a sense or doesn't have a sense to start with that the other senses are enhanced. Mm -hmm. Um, would, is that one, an accurate description and two, do you feel like that's true for you? Like, do you have a superior sense of smell or because that you've had the cochlear implant at such a young age, do you feel like you haven't missed out in that capacity? Yeah, that's a great question. I get that one a lot. Actually, um, mm-hmm. you know, I do have glasses. I never wear them, but uh, and I don't think my sense of smell is supersonic or anything. You know, I, yeah, I don't think my senses are really all that great, uh, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but yeah, I think it, it has something to do with the fact that I had my cochlear implants at such a young age, um, and so I did mention earlier that I was like really sensitive to vibrations when I'm sleeping. Mm. So that might be part of the sense. Um, that I was, that I'm gaining from losing my deafness. Yeah. Um, so, but other than that, yeah, I mean, I don't think I really do. Okay. Does it, we pivot into backpacking quick. We're going to probably go on a lot of side tracks here, but does it help you sleep at night when you're on trail to be able to take them out because then you can't hear like the eerie sounds of nature or does it make it worse because then you can't hear the eerie sounds of nature? A little bit of both. <laughs> What I mean by that is because, you know, sometimes, okay, I'll be camping by myself. I do a lot of that. And I just take them out and, you know, it just makes me not even think about it because, you know, if there's a bear outside my tent, he just jaunts on by. I'm not going to care um, unless he comes into my tent. That's the other thing that, like, kind of scares me is, you know, I'm in my tent and then a bear comes on in. I'm not going to know until it's on top of me. So, <laughs> yeah. I think at that point you're just like, well, God wanted me to go. Yeah, I'd rather <laughs> not know at that point, I think. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think it's. I think I lean more on the side of, like, it helps because then I'm just not thinking about it. Mm. Yeah. I don't even like using earplugs because I'm so sensitive to having the feeling of something in my ears, especially when I'm laying down on something. Do you, do you actually feel, like, do, are the implants uncomfortable for you or you've been using them for so long that it just feels yeah. second nature? <coughs> yeah, it kind of feels second nature. You know, like, when I don't wear them, I almost feel naked. Really, <laughs> to be honest, yeah, it's like it's kind of the same concept of glasses, yeah. So, because I'd imagine it, it'd be so nice to have the option to just turn off all sound, especially like on a windy night. It's not even necessarily the animal sounds, just like the constant, inconsistent, almost white noise that that's kept me up so many nights. To have the option to opt out of that sounds actually pretty sweet. Well, when I <laughs> camp, like a lot of the times at night if I can't fall asleep I'll put in my airpods and I'll just put them on noise canceling like I'm not even listening to mm. music I just use the noise canceling sure. yeah to try to help with like the twig crack sounds yeah um 
you know, I had people tell me multiple times that they loved camping next to me because then they could just roll around all they wanted in their tent and didn't have to worry about waking anyone else up. That's a good point. Yeah, I will say I can't on the AT. I hiked for about 600 miles with someone who was deaf and it was hilarious. Like we had a great time. It a lot of times it was kind of that where it was like, I know I'm not bothering you, but some right. of it was just like funny. Like he had a really great sense of humor and I think it just added like an extra element for us. Mm. Do you ever like go to a concert and turn the vote? Cause I'm getting to the age now where concerts are too loud for me to be able to control the, like you're taking the baby headphones <laughs> off the twins <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to be able to control the volume at a concert to be like, yeah, turn this racket down a little bit. Is that something that you ever do? I yeah. imagine you're controlling the volume on a regular basis. Yeah, actually there's a uh, different settings I can use for different like um, actual environments. So like when I'm on at a concert, there's a music setting that I can set it to. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then, like, if I'm... Is that just turning the volume down, or what other changes are Yeah, it's just kind of, like, changing the EQ a little bit to, like, optimize for music, I guess. Huh. Um, yeah, my audiologist loves it. <laughs> but Do I will you... say, the most tragic thing to happen for me at a concert is they die. Oh, no. Um, Has that happened? Yeah, multiple times. Yeah. What concerts? Um, there was a <laughs> Def Leppard concert I went to in high school. No. Nice. That That's a bad one to have... It. And so you haven't gotten to like the best songs yet because they're not closing and you can yeah. see it happen. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At that point, you're there. just people watching, huh? Yeah. Just people watching. And then like you're just standing there like, well, this is fun. Do you <laughs> keep like a set of spare batteries? Like can you – is that a thing? Yeah. I typically bring a spare set, but those, of course, are the times that I forgot. Yeah. Oh, my God. How long yeah. does one charge get you? Typically, it'll get me like 15 hours. Okay. So it's just like, you know, if it's just been a long day, it'll be towards the end of the day that I'll – that they'll die yeah is it like like let's say you go home is it like taking your bra i know you don't probably take your bra off when you get home but <laughs> is it like taking your bra off to take them off and like i would imagine probably speak asl to the people like in your home life to be able to not have to use them for a while or is it not like that kind of like ha huh, um feeling that i'm attributing to taking a bra off I will say that is something that I would do a lot um, towards like the first two weeks of school. So like, because if you think about it throughout the summer, you're not really intently listening. You're kind of just doing your own thing. You're having fun. Right. And so when you right when you go back to school, you have to like spend eight hours a day, like really trying to listen. And like for me to actually listen to things and hear things, it takes a lot more effort because I have to like differentiate between different sounds because a lot mm. of the stuff comes in at the same volume. Hmm. So my brain is kind of adjusted to just kind of focusing in on what I wanted to focus in on. By that, you mean like every background noise, like if somebody shuffles their chair or mm -hmm. you can hear the wind or whatever, a fan blowing, like all that's coming in at the same volume. So it's, you have to be able to discern what you're actually paying attention to. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I mean, more what I'm getting at is like, you know, fluorescent lights, if it's like above me and it's like buzzing, this one's fine. Mm -hmm. But, um, and like someone's trying to talk to me right here and they're both coming in at the same volume, it mm. doesn't, my brain doesn't differentiate it. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So, does this make hiking, like the Colorado Trail or any trail, does this make just like what might be a mundane making miles part of the hike, like just super wild for you? Because I imagine being able to hear the leaf cracks, the like tree breeze, like every little thing at the same volume. I just watched all the Twilights this past weekend, and when Bella got turned to a vampire, she was going through the woods, and she was seeing everything super hyper-focused, and that was wild. Mm -hmm. Would it be like that, where you're just, like, hiking, and you're just, like, whoa to everything, because it's all coming in louder? Mm. Um, or is that just in my head? Um, you know, I think that is... When I was younger, that was a thing, um, because then I was, like, experiencing things for the first time, you know, and being able to, like, hear different <coughs> sounds of nature when I was a lot younger was... You know, it was an experience, you know, I wish I could do that again, you know, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I, I don't really think so anymore. Um, just because, you know, I've had these for so long and I've been accustomed to it. It's just, it's just my normal life now. Yeah. Is there an auditory setting for something like being in the wilderness? Like you mentioned how there's like a music setting. Is there something for being outdoors? Um, I could make a setting. Yeah, I probably could. Um, just basically turn the, you know, higher frequencies down a little bit on my phone and yeah, basically I could. Hmm. Um, I never have. I usually typically just stay with my everyday setting mm -hmm. um, just because I'm used to it and 
that's basically the only reason. <laughs> okay, let's talk hiking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so when did the Colorado Trail get put on your map? How long have you been hiking? Give us the full like outdoors background. Yeah, um, I just grown up being outdoors, um, and my mom has taken me out on little day hikes when I was younger. Um, and growing up camping, my dad always took me camping a lot when I was growing up. And, uh, yeah, I've always enjoyed it. Um, and then I went to college and my buddies and I, we would go to the boundary waters every summer for a canoe fishing trip. Um, and that was always really fun. And did you just, go to school in Iowa, Minnesota? Yeah. I went to school at Iowa state university. Iowa state. Okay. Yeah, yeah, go clones. <laughs> <laughs> But They've had some good running backs, and re- you weren't there during the uh, Brees Hall years, were you? Yes, I was. Yeah, yeah. He's, a stud. he's, he's really killing good. it in the Jets. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's a great. <laughs> I'm watching the 49ers with Brock Purdy right now. Was he Iowa State as well? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, 49ers have a bad night yesterday or the day before. They've lost yeah. a couple games, but they lost. They're still really good. I'm just making myself feel better. <laughs> it was not a good game yesterday. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Boundary Waters in college. Uh, yes. And then when did the CT get put on your map? Oh, yeah. So I had a buddy. I was just work. So I'll back up a second here. So I was working in Iowa, um, and I was just – I was right after I had graduated college, and I had a couple buddies who just went off and, you know, took like a gap year. Or I even – what really inspired me was I had a buddy um, who did the PCT. Um, and I was like, man, yeah, I really want to do something like that. And uh, that really is what inspired me. And so I was just like, I just Googled places in Colorado to go hiking. Hmm. And that's literally all it was. And then it, the Colorado Trail came up. <laughs> Colorado <laughs> Trails. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> yeah. So what was your longest backpacking trip prior to this? Um, actual backpacking trip prior to that one would have been like a week in the Boundary Waters. But that was canoeing. So yeah. I wouldn't even consider that backpacking sure i'd say it was probably just a weekend trip okay like one or two weekend trips how's that yeah so what considerations did you have to make for the colorado trail that maybe someone who didn't have deafness wouldn't have to consider like what was it like for you to plan for this trip that set it apart from canoeing or anything different yeah um i think it was really the battery situation trying to figure out how i'm going to keep these things charged um because yeah because when i was in the boundary waters i had them dud out because it was so cold and like Mm -hmm. i forgot to sleep with them (laughs) that was a rookie mistake always sleep with your batteries that's very important yeah is it so is it like your phone where if you are in like my phone it'll do it when i'm at too high of an elevation and it's like exposed and there's cold the Mm -hmm. phone will just die even if it's fully charged yeah is it like that with your batteries because they're not really protected much from the elements in your ears yeah no that's totally that same thing yeah that same concept like i was talking more on like my disposable batteries the ones i have on right now are my rechargeable batteries um and so i had a little fob that i could like connect to the portable battery charger and that's what i predominantly used but it broke on me and so i had to use the actual batteries and they dudded out in the boundary waters because it was so cold Mm -hmm. and when i that was one big thing that i was really worried about for planning um and then yeah it actually happened to me again on the Colorado Trail Um, and I just ended up having another resupply box that had extra batteries in it and so Mm -hmm. it worked out but I almost went a week without being able to hear on trail. So it gets so cold that the battery just breaks like it's not you can't warm it back up and recharge it? Yeah the so they're like zinc air batteries is Mm -hmm. what they're called and like when they're exposed to a certain temperature then it just like duds out. Hmm. Yeah it's super weird. When you're talking about disposable batteries, are you talking about just like our standard AAAs or are there like how you just unclicked that battery from it? Is Mm -hmm. it that, but you just toss it after each use? Yeah, it's kind of like that. So there's like a little sheath that um, comes out and then it holds, you know, those little like little, little batteries. Yeah, like the watch ones? Yeah, kind of like those. That's basically what they're used. So the disposable part's that little circle battery. Yeah. Got it. So what was it like? You said it was a, were you a week without proper battery for the i almost was a week without it but then it happened to have it at the your resupply yeah then i happened to find them at the bottom of my resupply box got it like thank you (laughs) yeah so did you go i imagine something like a half day from the time that it broke to get to town to actually get your resupply yeah actually one of them died and all the other ones so i had my right one which is my favorite one because i had it first Mm -hmm. um and so i favor that side more um and so I had that one working and then no more batteries left. And then my left one was dead. So I'm like, well, crap, I know I have half a day before. Mm. 
I can't hear at all. Is it really disorienting for it to only work in one ear? Because uh, you know, Apple AirPods sometimes the, like the old ones, like one of them just won't charge even if it's sitting in the dock. Mm-hmm. So I've I've been at the gym before where I'm listening to music through one AirPod, and for me it's really distracting. Like I feel like my workout sucks just because I'm so thrown off by having the inconsistent audio. Is that I imagine for you it's significantly worse yeah is is it pretty distracting for it only to be registering audio on one side um you know for like the first second it is um and then it kind of just goes back to just all right well i know that that's the only side that sounds coming from so i gotta tilt my head a little more that way and Mm -hmm. just kind of i unconsciously adjust Mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean other than that yeah i mean it's it just really does suck when that happens in inconvenient times like a concert (laughs) How do you handle that when it's on trail? Because there's a quote, I was trying to look it up quick enough, but there's a quote from a book I've mentioned on here countless <clears throat> times, Spark the Revolutionary New Science Between Exercise and the Brain. I highly recommend it still. Great book. Um, but they talk about people that are, and I think it was in this book they talked about it, people that are left alone like to their own thoughts and how a uh, percentage that's higher than I would have expected of these people would rather be like subjected to mild electric shocks than left alone with their own thoughts and like no other noise for you know a day longer you know it was 15 minutes I think is what the study was it was super small and it basically was just going to like back this evidence that like people aren't comfortable spending time with themselves like in their own thoughts that sort of thing to to lose hearing on a trail and to have to go like a day two days even when you were talking about the canoeing trip however long that was before getting it back how is your mental like overall wellness adjusting to i mean i assume in these settings where they're doing these studies they have the choice like i can quit the study i can leave the room i can go hear things and i've seen people on trail where they haven't talked to anyone in like five days and they look different um (laughs) How, how do you see that happen and take something like that that happens to you on trail? And A, what does it do to you mentally? And B, how do you combat not being able to flip that back on? Yeah, it's a really interesting thing because, you know, there's weekends that I'll go camping and I'll just not have my sea eyes on. Hmm. And for me, it's a place that I can really just think things through and be by myself. Um, and so I actually do enjoy that time. Um, mm. and I, you know, I'm an, extro- I'm an extrovert, you know, I guess I'm a little more of an introvert now, just since COVID and everything else, you know, I do like being on my own now and just kind of taking them off and being in my own little world. Cause that's really what it is. I'm in my own little world. Um, and so I guess like on a trail sense, you know, it does get a little scary at first because then you're like when the first time that it happened where like they died on trail and I was just like a almost a day without being able to hear outside um i was just constantly like panning my surroundings just constantly because you know i don't know if there's another hiker coming along i don't know if there's you know i'm gonna run come up on something um that might not be very friendly (laughs) so um yeah there's definitely times that it is a little scary but i've become accustomed to it to that question did you have anyone that you could reach out to as a resource prior to the CT who was deaf that you could ask these questions to? I had nobody. Hmm. I just kind of figured it, up, figured it out as I went. Um, nobody I knew who was deaf had ever done anything like this, I guess. Hmm. Um, and so I just, I'm a big fan of just going for it. <laughs> it's a good attitude. Yeah. Is there any sort of community, Facebook group, whatever platform it might be, where you have access to other people where you could ask this question yeah and you're like hey has anyone done long distance backpacking and everyone's just crickets yeah no pun intended yeah i mean there <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one <laughs> um yeah there's actually a couple different facebook groups um where there's you know families who have cochlear implants they can like the parents can talk on there um and i actually grew up attending a cochlear implant family camp 
Hmm. Um, and so I met a lot of people from all over the United States who also had cochlear implants. Because, hmm. you know, growing up in Iowa, small town Iowa, you're not going to have anybody in a 100-mile radius who's also deaf. You mentioned before we hit record that your graduating class was 23 people. 28. 28. <laughs> Don't short you those five people. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, a small big percentage town. of it. <laughs> yeah. What, what was the population of your town? Oh, probably about like 1,000 people. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's small. Yeah, it was pretty small. I mean, it was literally... Yeah, like 30 minutes away from Des Moines. Hmm. Are there any trail-specific groups, like Facebook groups, that are long-distance focused for people that have, like, hearing no, disabilities? not that I know of. That's a, That's good, a good idea, though. I might, I might do that tonight. Well, I, ha- <laughs> I mean, I hiked with Mr. Perfect, and he was deaf. And then he had a friend that we spoke to several times that wasn't hiking, but she came to trail days, so I had met her, too. And I know there's a few others that have, like, come across the radar, but I think that would be a great resource yeah, totally. for, like, you guys to have with each other um just before we move too far off the your your implants die while hiking how do you handle that Mm -hmm. topic a lot of things that you'll hear when people aren't thriving at a long distance hike like a lot of it comes down to all the alone time right Mm -hmm. like there's so much time with your own mind there's so much time where you're not stimulated by other things and i think when we're just constantly fed just like social feeds to scroll through content here and there a tv on in the background that's where like you start to see people like i mentioned the one who hadn't talked to someone for five days where they just seem unwell right like they're not doing good and i know that can bring a lot of people off trail as someone who will go weekends where you just take them out and actually enjoy it Mm -hmm. do you have tips for people for hiking without sounds to keep them stimulated while hiking or to make mm-hmm. it seem less jarring for them? Like are there things they can do that make it better if they're yeah. not one that usually thrives in that setting? Yeah, I mean, I would say first off, you gotta like your inner, inner monologue. Mm. You know, you gotta be best friends with your inner monologue because otherwise it's gonna be a battle. You know, because um, if you aren't best friends with your inner monologue, then you're gonna be just you know fighting each other and really what it comes down to is are you comfortable by yourself? And if you're kind of uncomfortable in those settings, then, you know, you just kind of got to go back to, you know, why does it make you uncomfortable? Because there's probably a reason. um, And there's probably something deeper that stems from that. Hmm. How did you get comfortable with yourself? I assume assume based on my, based on this is based on me, but I assume not everyone's born comfortable with themselves. I assume it takes effort. Um, Assuming you're not just naturally comfortable with with yourself, how do you get there? Ooh. That's a, tough a big one. question. That's a deep <laughs> yeah, question. Well. That's very deep. <laughs> now you have to give us Making therapy. Making it easy for Zach's follow up. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It just seems like you're doing yeah. really well with it. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, I, um, what I kind of did was I just, you know, took it step by step, you know, cause I first day that happened to me and I just kind of, you know, I couldn't do anything about it. You know, I didn't have my Garmin yet. Um, and so, um, you know, that would happen a lot growing up, you know, I'd be at school and they would die and I wouldn't have batteries. I have to go the rest of the day without being able to hear Um, And so I guess just that those little moments of exposure of, you know, have being forced to be by yourself in your own little world, that kind of culminated to an extended period of time that can happen. So like doing a shakedown hike, but like a quiet shakedown, like a... Mm -hmm. Yeah, like do, do little shakedown hikes basically where you like maybe first day you go by yourself and then the second day you have a friend that comes out and meets you. Hmm. Um, that, that's, that'd be a good way to do it. Um, or vice versa where you go out with two people and then you just, you stay an extra day by yourself. I was thinking even smaller, like just sitting on the couch without using my phone, oh, you know, like before yeah. you even go outside, just sit there and don't touch the phone for an hour, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely don't touch the phone. <laughs> Do you have to worry about them getting wet? Like, is it a concern if it's raining outside? Do oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's like they're more water resistant now. Um, but, yeah, back in the day, like, you had to take them off. Like, it was super sensitive to water. Hmm. Um, and one thing I'll say about that camp that I grew up going to is um, they had a pool party every year. And if you imagine this scenario where you put a bunch of deaf people into a pool and they don't have waterproof stuff yet, the lifeguards are going to love you. Hmm. <laughs> they're blowing their whistle they're doing all that they can and you no one in the pool is even listening to you they hmm. can't hear you and so i mean like it's just crazy to see how technology has advanced because you know when you go to that camp now everyone has their waterproof stuff on hmm. and so like yeah now you, it's a little more waterproof or yeah. resistant than yeah. it was what areas would you like to see improvement with the tech like you mentioned that 
it's advanced from like a waterproofness standpoint. Mm -hmm. What areas do you see it could potentially still have room for improvement? Oh yeah, I mean, it's improving every year. Um, There's another upgrade that I could get. um, And so basically what they're doing with their new upgrade now um, is you can go to an airport and it'll automatically connect to the Bluetooth there. And they'll tell you like when you're boarding and all that and you can connect to any Bluetooth device basically. Can someone hack your mind then? Can, like, can I, <laughs> I hope not. Like, can I just like how the airport would Bluetooth to your sounds? Can I Bluetooth to it and be like, I'm in your head? You know, like, oh, I hope is not. that a possibility? It's, it's pretty dystopian <laughs> with the right technology. Well, if an probably. airport no, can just been, do I'm it. I'm not saying it's crazy. I'm saying it's scary. I feel like that's yeah. very possible. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a possible. I, mean, I don't know. I hope not. But uh, that'd be scary. <laughs> Are you excited about those advancements or is that kind of like freaky? Because that kind of freaks me out a bit. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited because I mean, they're doing it in the right mind. I hope so. I mean, yeah, it, se- <laughs> it seems out of kindness. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, out of kindness, I hope. But yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, I don't know. Because like, ev- it seems like ev- each model that they make, it gets smaller and smaller. And they actually have one now where it's without the actual processor that goes on your head, but the magnet. And it's just the little magnet. Mm-hmm. It's like oh. that big. That's interesting because I'm thinking of this from the standpoint of like just getting you to the point where you can hear like the normal person, the person with normal hearing. Mm-hmm. But what you're describing are enhancements that are even beyond what yeah. somebody with that level of hearing has. Yeah. I guess it opens up a whole train of ideas for ways that it could, you could be enhanced beyond you mentioned being able to know when you're boarding, but there's probably yeah. infinite possibilities in that right. standpoint. Yeah, tons. I mean, like, it would be really cool to just have, like, a little, like, basically you don't even have to wear your processor every day, but it's, like, all internal. And then you, like, wear your processor to charge it, kind of like air charge, or, like, you know, you have your little pod that you set your phone on and it automatically charges without having to plug in. Like, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, because I remember for a while, sorry to cut you off, John. Uh, but you're probably more relevant than mine. For a while, the buzzword was augmented reality. And we're seeing this now with like Google Glass mm-hmm. and now Apple's got this too, about like the way that you visually interface with the world and it giving you more context than you would otherwise have. Um, from an auditory standpoint, thinking hiking, like if you heard like a bird call, and That's what I was saying about uh, nature being wild. Yeah, being able to have the implant to be like, oh, that is the blue-footed booby. Oh, oh <laughs> that'd be, that'd so be cool. cool. Yeah. That's that goes back to your Tony Stark stuff, where you yeah, wanted the Iron, Iron Man, Man suit. Totally. That's yeah. a feature of the Iron Man suit. Well, I was gonna ask on the same realm of wild, <laughs> like if there's any upgrades that have been made yet where it can hear different languages and it still transmits English to you. No, there hasn't been one of those, but there has been one. I actually really don't like this setting. I, I currently have it, but I don't have it turned on. And what it does is it's called like zoom. And so if there's like a crowd of people around me and I face this one person that I want to listen to, it'll like zoom in on that person that I want to listen to. Hmm. Wow. And it'll kind of cut everyone else out. But, yeah, it doesn't really work when you're like in a basement and like your mom or whoever screams from the fr- first floor. Then, because then it's like, well, it's listening to the air conditioner, but then it doesn't quite know if that yeah. other sound coming. It from doesn't know what else. to focus in on. Yeah, then it just kind of screws it up. Right. This is going to be probably my dumbest question of the night. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's hard to ever tell. <laughs> the night is young. <laughs> uh, we got time. Yeah. Do people ever use these that don't need them? Like if you're not hard of hearing, is because I feel like some of the stuff you're saying sounds really good. Like I'm kind of not je- like not jealous, obviously. Yeah. I'm very grateful for the hearing I have. Um, but it sounds really cool to be able to zoom in on certain things and make things louder. Like I, I struggle when there's a lot of noises going on at once. Yeah. Are there people that use these like, things that don't need them? Cause it's just like, like really cool or just strategic. I don't know. I just feel like yeah. that's, it sounds like a superpower to me. It, it is, you know, I mean, to an extent, yeah, it is a superpower. I mean, with technology, the way it is now, if you told someone in the 1800s, what I could do, they'd be like, what planet are He's you from? He's a witch, from? burn him. <laughs> Yeah. Um, So it's insane to think about. But um, no, I haven't really known anyone just because the fact that insurance is such a battle, Mm. Um, especially back in the day. Like when I first got him, my mom was, she's the rock star. Like Mm. she wrote letters on letters on letters just to get insurance approval. Hmm. How much do they cost? I mean, we were paying, oh shoot. I mean, they're probably, I probably have like, I don't know, half a million dollars in my head. Shut up. No. Just the part that's inside? 
all of it, like external, internal surgery, everything. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Does the implant itself, I'm thinking like fake joints, they have a lifespan of 20 years. Mm -hmm. Is this something that has to be refreshed on a, on a ba on a consistent basis? Yeah. The, they gave the internal stuff like 18 years Okay. and I'm well past that. I'm 23. Um, and so it's kind of like any day now I asked mm -hmm. my audiologist, like what she thought would be kind of when I'd need to be re-implanted. Um, and she's just like, you know, it could be 10 years from now, could be, you know, five years from now, it could be next year. Hmm. Is the only consideration that the sound part stops? Is it not like the, the stuff that makes it like deteriorates, degrades, gets absorbed by brain goo? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how, brain. I don't know how a lot of things work. <laughs> oh, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. I mean, it's just really like the lifespan <clears throat> of the technology. If it is able to last that long, um, internally, um, because those internal devices don't get touched, you know, cause you have surgery to get them put in and then that's it when you switch to a new one is it going to be like getting the same thing like you leave the same person as you entered or is it like upgrading like your you know 97 toyota camry to the newest range rover it'll be like upgrading kind of like to a range rover because mm -hmm. it'll be different technology there'll be because nowadays it's just an outpatient there like procedure when I got them, like I had to stay in the hospital for a couple of days hmm. and I had this big old bandage around me and like, it was, it did not look pretty. I had hmm. like these big scars and now, you know, it's just a little slit behind the ear and then they slide the little magnet in and they're able to do everything with the cochlea all within an outpatient procedure. Can you feel it? Yeah. I mean, Can I touch it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So is that where the cochlea is? Like that far above the actual ear or is it i thought the cochlea was right inside the ear i don't i don't feel it because mm. it's right there yeah huh so it's it's, it's like a little, slight little bump there oh, but okay. um yeah so that's how it's held on to my head is a, a magnet wow yeah you mentioned at the top of the interview that there were other um ramifications i'm not sure of being deaf or you say cmv was the yeah, can you look that up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's bothering me so much. Uh, cytomegalovirus? Yes, that's it. Yes. Okay. Okay. You, you mentioned that like um that your immune system is compromised because of is is that because of the deafness or because of the virus itself? Uh I'd say that one was because of the virus itself. Okay. Um and so like growing up like I would brush my teeth twice a day, like every other kid, right? Mm -hmm. But I would get cavities on cavities. <laughs> yes. Like, I had to it's convince, not the candy. <laughs> <laughs> I had to convince people growing up that I brush my teeth twice a day and floss every day because I would just get, keep getting cavities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just, yeah. So they think that has something to do with CMV, like a weak um, enamel, mm -hmm. basically. Um, and then, like, the part that comes with the deafness is I don't have balance. So I don't mm. have the liquid in, in the semicircular canals oh. that give people balance. Hmm. And so, like, how does that play out? Uh, <laughs> I'm very clumsy. Well, there's some like steep. I mean, there's not like I, I don't like steep things. There's not mm -hmm. scary stuff on the Colorado Trail, but there's some there's some ridges. Yeah. Does that like screw you up? Well, oh, definitely. Um, there was actually when we got to the high point of the Colorado Trail, we did an alpine start. Um, and that was actually my first 30 mile day. No, that was, woo -woo. That was awesome. <laughs> my trail family is awesome for pushing me to do that. But, um, anyway, so we woke up at like two 30 in the morning and started hiking and it was complete darkness, you know, but the stars were out and that was kind of hopeful, but I had to have my headlamp on like the brightest it could go. And even with that, I was using my trekking poles side to side, basically holding myself up, walking on basically four legs hmm. just to stay up with the rest of the trail family hmm. huh. yeah are there other so you mentioned the batteries dying you mentioned uh balance being a challenge are there mm -hmm. other things that are not obvious that would be, make something like this more challenging um yeah i think it would just be really the clumsiness um that's a really big thing and another one that a lot of people don't think about is swimming so when I'm swimming, like, and I can't see which way is up or down, oh, I have I don't like zero that. idea where, where to go. Yeah. So like when I was younger, I got pushed into the lake. We were boating and 
I think it was my friend's dad. Like, who, who pushes a deaf kid into the water? Asshole. But, <laughs> is there anything, <laughs> yeah, like a young kid makes sense because yeah. <laughs> they're dumb. But, like, someone's dad is – I would be mad about that. Yeah. So, anyway, besides that, um, I, like – get into the water and I don't have my life jacket on. And so I'm swimming and I open my eyes and I quickly realize I can't see where the sun oh, is. No. Cause that's exactly what I look for is where's the sun. Mm. Cause that tells me where to go. And so I just picked a direction and started swimming. I eventually hit the bottom of the lake and no. co- kicked myself up. And Do you feel yeah. your ears popping? Like, do you get that, like, I'm going too deep ear poppy feeling? Yeah, kind of. So I kind of could tell that I'm getting towards the bottom. Um, and so, yeah, I do get that only in my left ear though because huh. I don't have an eardrum in my right side. Hmm. Whoa. Okay. So, like, if you go to the bottom of a pool, your ears don't always pop? No, not always, no. Or, like, even when I go on a plane, they, they sometimes won't. Sometimes my left one will. But other than that, not normally. Whoa. Did your mom have some choice words for your, your friend's dad? I didn't tell her. Okay. She's going to find out through this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's, she's going to write a sternly too. worded letter. To <laughs> is she going to know who it is yeah. the second we say it? Um, okay. So Colorado Trail, it's the Colorado Trail surprised me because I live in Colorado. I think mm-hmm. I know Colorado. Like I've been here, and then there's so much of it that's above tree line for oh, so yeah. long. And the one thing I took note of when I left the Colorado Trail is how much your day revolves around weather. And oh, yeah. doing other trails first, you think you understand that until you get even people that do the Connell Divide Trail from. What I've talked to people that I've done it about say that when they get to Colorado, it's a different beast. And I think just the weather and the lightning and the unpredictability of the storms really impacts your day. How does that impact having the implants in with the water and the wetness and the waterproof? And then also, like, do you hike with them out at times? And then does that impact your ability to hear thunder or anything like that? I mean, obviously, you can see when it's getting stormy, but... Mm -hmm. What is that like going through um, terrain like that? Yeah, no, you hit the nail on the yeah, you hit the nail on the head there with that because I mean, when you're up at tree line and you start seeing these you know storms come in and it starts pelting rain, you know I have to take them off. You know I'm not going to keep them on, and so yeah, it does become kind of tough. I have never been in a situation like that where I was by myself and had that happen to me, but um, I was hiking with people on the Colorado Trail pretty consistently. I started it by myself, but then I ended up meeting a pretty cool trail family, and we kind of stuck together. Um, and there was a girl, yeah, she was like a get backpacking guide and knew all the stuff that you need to know. Um, and so that was super helpful to be a part of that. Um, and so I would, yeah, in that one situation, it was just pelting rain. We were basically above tree line. I took them off and, you know, just followed her. <laughs> Are there any tips that you gathered after, like, now that's in the back of the memory bank, we're mm-hmm. here. Is there anything you learned from it that you would give as advice to someone who's also deaf who might have the Colorado Trail or any other trail with weather on their, like, to-do list that mm-hmm. would help them? Yeah, I would say have a Ziploc bag at your side, mm-hmm. like, just in your little, you know, hip belt pocket, because then you can quickly just put them in there, and then you're good. Um, and then also make sure you have a... Um, a rain jacket that can cinch down at the top because Mm -hmm. sometimes you don't always want to take them off and you know if it's raining pretty hard you can you know put your hood up and cinch it down and you're pretty well covered would you use for rain jacket i just have an rei rain jacket that i got on sale yeah nice (laughs) i've got a patent pending yeah um you know how a lot of places catabatic especially because i just memorized their ad read Mm -hmm. but places will do down hoods Mm -hmm. and you can just get the hood that's down I feel like it would be helpful for places to do just down, no, not down, but rain jacket hoods. Like, not the rain jacket, but just oh, the hood. Yeah. Because then you can just have... Sure. Or making a hood that is completely waterproof. Because there's always the trade-off between having the breathability yeah. and something that actually keeps the rain out. Yeah, like the Buzz Lightyear hat. Yeah. But, yeah, oh. for, for Brady's standpoint, having something where no moisture is getting in, yeah. that seems like a feature that would be paramount for you, right? Yeah, that'd yeah. be awesome. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that'd be awesome. I mean, it can handle some moisture, but I'm just kind of iffy about it. Cause... Yeah, I feel like that's not something you want to test. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned the balance in the context of navigating, like, alpine terrain mm-hmm. when it's dark out and that being challenging, but so much with backpacking requires good balance. Like even like when you're navigating roots and rocks and all that, Mm -hmm. 
were you having to be more careful than other people in your trail family just going on normal terrain and like is this something that you had to communicate with them like hey guys i might be lagging behind a little bit so don't mm -hmm. wait up for me or do wait up or whatever it might be yeah. i'm just curious to know if like this is a conversation that you had to had with your trail family yeah i mean i don't know if i explicitly had that conversation but you know we'd be hiking along and i'd trip and i'm like ah jeez why does this keep happening? I'm like, well, I know why this keeps happening. I have zero balance, you know, mm -hmm. and then that'd spark a conversation. Um, but, um, so they were aware of it. Um, and they would just, you know, we'd always have that conversation of, Hey, we're camping around this area. Um, and so if I lost them, then no big deal. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, in the case of like really rocky terrain, like I go a lot slower than most people mm -hmm. just because of that exact same thing. Like I'm going to, if I really hurt myself out here, like, which I'm really prone to doing, I hurt mm -hmm. myself a lot. <laughs> And that would not be good. You also mentioned that you got a Garmin at some point during the hike. Yes. Is that now something that you'll just be backpacking with yeah. forever? Yeah, forever. I mean, a couple weekends ago, I did the um, Aspen to Crested Butte and back. Like, mm -hmm. that was really fun. But I just had my Garmin on me. It was just a day hike. You know? Yeah. Um, and so I do that every time now. Um, I got my Garmin before the CT. Um, I actually got it basically like a couple months right beforehand just so that I could you test did it Aspen out. to Crested Butte and back in a day yeah that's a big day yeah it was, is that the four pass brutal. loop yeah it was yeah four, it wasn't the full four pass loop okay you but, could go one direction with yeah. it uh I mean that is a big day it's yeah, a very big day 21 yeah. miles yeah. nonchalant yeah but I heard those miles are harder than regular miles well did you do the, the um West Maroon Pass yes portion of that okay mm -hmm. yeah West yeah. Maroon Pass yeah it was just, I had a buddy come up from Texas. He came from Texas. And then you the made him do day, that in a day? He wanted me to do it in a day. <laughs> <laughs> and he did it, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. It was that same buddy who did the PCT. Yeah, his name's Travis. He's a cool guy. He's going to be listening to this. Mm. But <laughs> So now that you've got the Colorado Trail under your belt, would you feel comfortable going out and doing solo backpacking? Or where are you going to feel, are you going to try to arrange a situation where you've got a trail family with you at all times? I actually went into the Colorado Trail kind of knowing that I would be by myself for most of the time. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect to have such a big trail family like I did. Um, like by the time we ended, you know, we called ourselves the Dirty Bubble because uh, we were like the bubble of the Colorado Trail. And like we had like 18 people. With 18, us. damn. Yeah. And like there, we had this uh, lady in our um, trail family who had a house in Durango. And so we had like this big old like ending party. And like, you know, I, my trail experience feels a little different than most people because like they don't a lot of people say that the Colorado Trail is something that they don't really like deem as a social trail right I feel like it's getting yeah. there it's getting there it really is mm. yeah this summer was there was a lot of people what was your start date that. uh July 1st and when did you finish August 3rd 2nd so. yeah August 2nd yeah do you have any standout story like I'm big on stories I like being able to not in a lazy way but I like being able to sit back and mm -hmm. listen to you tell me a nice story that I can kind of just like get into. Yeah. Do you have any standout stories from the Colorado Trail that are like noteworthy to share? Ooh. You know, I guess, yeah, I do. I have a couple. So there's one where uh, I think you guys would like this for your shit book. Well, it's not a shit book. <laughs> I love it's that. A book about shit. <laughs> it's no, a it's shit, a shit book. It's a shit book about shit. It's absolutely shitting. a shit book. <laughs> um, about the turds and the. <laughs> Go back to our segments that the listeners haven't heard yet. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, this isn't my poop story, but I met this guy named Shitfoot. Love it. <laughs> I mean, already right there. It was just the way he told it. It was just hilarious. Um, he was hiking the AT, um, and he was, like, running to a bathroom, like a pit toilet, and it was, like, pouring rain, and he had just gotten back from town, and he, like, stepped in shit. But this was, like, someone had, like, gone, like, run into the mm. pit toilet, but then couldn't make it all the way. And so then they dug a hole in the trail, did their <laughs> oh business, God. like, right in the middle of the trail, yeah. did their business, and then didn't even cover it up. Uh, yeah. Uh, and so he, so like, built the fully, shit trench. Yeah. Fully stepped in it. Ugh. Like, in the shoe, everything. It was, yeah. It got in his shoe? Yeah. And... Yeah, so he went to the toilet, did his thing, and then went back to his girlfriend, and he's like, hey, we're going back to town, right? <laughs> Circling back to what the listener has not yet heard, yeah. this will make sense when you've gotten to the end of the episode. We're coming to you from the future here. This is another reason for no to shoeies. 
<laughs> right. I, it depends on the shoe, but yeah, I guess most people have probably stepped in shit unknowingly. Over 2,650 Although miles. I would think most of them didn't get shit in their shoe. You never know. Yeah. yeah. I've got a note here that your trail name is Undies. Yes. <laughs> What's the story there? Oh, that's a fun story. Yeah, I, uh, I was staying at this hostel in Breckenridge and they had a hot tub. And so, you know, naturally I asked, hey, can I just wear my underwear in the hot tub? You didn't say undies? No, I didn't say undies. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the reason why I'm okay. called undies either. Um, and so I, I'm sitting in the hot tub that goes as normally as it could go with one sitting in a hot tub with their underwear. Um, anyway, so fast forward and I hang my underwear on the bunk because I have to leave the next morning and I wanted them to be dry. So I can get hiking in the morning and I'm like two or three miles in and I realize I don't have my underwear. I have my shit pair of underwear. They're, I didn't actually shit in them, but they're just like, <laughs> they're just not my good pair of underwear is what Got I'm getting it. at. Uh-huh. Yeah, they're not my good pair of underwear. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> but my nice pair of underwear is like the merino wool. Uh-huh. Underwear, like super nice, right? And what's the not nice pair? Uh, for some <laughs> Amazon brand, I don't know. Yeah. Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're my true undies. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I used my Garmin. I texted my mom because there was nobody else I knew that would actually do anything about it. Like, if I were to text my buddy, he'd be like, hey, I left my underwear at a hostel. Mom. He's going to be like, okay. So my mom, she calls the hostel and leave, and the guy at the hostel puts my mom on speakerphone <laughs> in front of all these hikers. <laughs> Who know you? <laughs> that I had met the previous day. <laughs> <laughs> and so these hikers are just like, well, okay. Um, they're just cracking up. Listen, I mean, I wasn't actually there. What was she saying? She was like, hey, my son forgot his underwear on your bunk. Um, and <laughs> Mom. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah. And so these hikers are just like, we'll get him his underwear. We'll bring it to him. And so they like change their entire plan and they grab my underwear and start hiking. And I like... <laughs> kind of had a sense that somebody was going to bring them to me, but I didn't know how. So how were they clean? <laughs> yeah, they were clean. I was going to okay. say, how uncomfortable are you with someone else just, like, bringing you your own underwear? <laughs> I feel like I'd rather them burn them. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I can just find some in Twin Lakes, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> It's my nice pair. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, so they, I was, a couple days later, like, over, this was over a couple days. Like, they were hiking extra miles to catch up with me. <laughs> And so I kind of knew that someone was trying to catch up, so I just, like, slowed down a little bit. And I was eating lunch on top of Cyril Pass, and there were, like, a bunch of other random hikers. And I just hear these people, like, screaming, Brady! And they're, like, <laughs> waving my underwear, <laughs> running up the mountain. <laughs> How'd they know it was you? Well, I think it was because of my sun shirt is what they said. Okay. Because I, have, I had, like, a really, like, tan, like, not a tan, but, like, a blue sun shirt. And I always wore the hood up mm. because the wind was super bad with my sea eyes. And so, yeah, and... Other people were just looking around like, what is this guy? <laughs> and they gave me my underwear. They said that uh, my trail name was now Undies. That's a good way to get a trail name. <laughs> yeah. So. so you mentioned keeping the batteries at above a certain temperature. You mentioned yeah. having a Ziploc bag in the scenario that things are getting wet. Are there other things that you would do differently to prepare for your next backpacking trip, n- knowing what you know now? Um. I would say I would honestly um, do what I did when I was on the Colorado Trail. I think I hammered it out pretty well. Hmm. Um, You know, the Ziploc bags. um, And then I would say another thing would be to be more communicative with the people I'm hiking with about, like, hey, like, if I'm not up at this time, like, you should probably wake me up. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, because you mentioned your alarm that vibrates you awake. I assume you didn't bring that with. No. I had my phone. Yeah, does the phone vibrate enough to actually get you up? Half the time. Okay. <laughs> so you're good at sleeping in. Yeah, I'm good at sleeping in. Yeah. But, uh, I've gotten better uh, over the years. But um, on the trail, I've, actually, I just ended up putting it inside my, like, little pillow. Hmm. Um, I have those, like, the Nemo um, inflatable pillow. Mm-hmm. And so it has that little, like, case around it. And so then I, when I put that in that little case on the bottom side, then it wakes me up. A question that fits between whatever question befo- came before Zach's and Zach's. I think this is a pre-Zach question because he was saying, what would you do for next hikes? My question is, 
did you like this hike and would you do another one? Oh yeah. I want to do the PCT. What would be different scaling this up to six months for you? It would Assuming be a, it would take that long. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it would probably take me six months. Um, I, I think the biggest challenge would be the resupplies because like getting extra batteries, because what, one thing that I noticed was I was carrying a lot of extra batteries just out of fear. Mm. And like when they die, I can't just throw them away. Like I'm stuck with that weight, you know? And so like when I throw them away, it has to be, you know, cause it's not environmentally friendly just to throw batteries into the woods. Mm. So I guess that would be one thing I would look into more is probably have more frequent resupplies so that I didn't have to carry as many batteries. Um, and so that would be a challenge for the PCT, I think. How much do they weigh? Um, <laughs> I didn't weigh them out, but they're not terribly heavy. They're like, when a pack of them comes with those like little watch batteries of like six of them, like mm. nine of them actually. Yeah, it's nine batteries. And so what's really bad about them is since they're zinc air batteries, they can't touch each other. Mm. And so what I tried doing before that I went on the CT was I tried putting them all in like a baggie. So it was just like a bag full of batteries, mm. but I can't do that with them because apparently something with them coming in contact with each other duds them out. Hmm. Oh, that's a hard lesson to learn. Yeah. Yeah. It was a really hard lesson. Did to you learn, learn that on trail? I was doing like a weekend trip. Yeah. Yeah. And I went the last day without being able to use testing battery after battery. And like yep. slowly it's realizing. Yeah. Oh yeah. What ratio, or maybe you could do absolute number, would you do mm -hmm. of um, rechargeable versus non-rechargeable batteries if you're just going to start fresh with a new backpacking trip? Yeah, I would probably do, like, say if I were going to be out there for a week, I would do probably, like, three days' worth of disposable batteries, and then the rest would be just be... The rechargeables are... The, I can use the ones that are on my head, mm -hmm. and there's, like, a little fob that I can plug that's, like, a little USB charger, basically. Um, and that plugs into any portable charger. And so I can use that for, as my predominant source. Hmm. But what sucks about it is when I was doing that, I would only have one extra rechargeable battery. And so then I'd have like a rotation of the three. Hmm. But then at a certain point, I ended up just because like, I'd be lazy and I'd be like, oh, it died. And so I wouldn't do it for a little bit. And I just have one that was not dead for a little bit. Um, and then I'd end up with two that were dead. And then that would be tragic. Hmm. And so and then I would just ended up being in a cycle where I would constantly have one dead battery. Mm. This might actually be my dumbest question of the episode now that I'm thinking it through. Yeah. You mentioned that it connects to your phone. If mm -hmm. you're listening to music or a podcast while hiking, mm -hmm. do you, this seems like I'm answering my own question. You don't need headphones. You don't need to put in AirPods. It just goes through those. No, I have the OG AirPods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've just, I've j only just, like I I understood it was dumb as I asked it, but I've no. only just put that together. That well, I guess you save weight on not needing regular headphones. Then, like that's kind of a trade off. Yeah, I suppose. With half a milli worth of gear on your head, how bad is it if you were to lose and or break one? Uh, pretty bad. <laughs> um, like, is it like like is it like a major stressor or is it just like it's chill? I mean, right now it's kind of chill. I have a couple other um, cochlear implants. Just throughout the years, I've kind of collected them, like my pre my old ones that still work. So, and I'm pretty good friends with my audiologist, and so she actually gave me an extra pair of CIs to bring with me hmm. on the trip. Um, and so that was super clutch. That was really nice because um, those are not cheap. Um, and yeah, it kind of is a little bit of a crisis mode when one of them does die. I mean, when one of them does break or get lost, um, because you could be, you know, a week or you know two weeks without it, depending on how long it takes for cochlear to get a new one out to you. Hmm. And, you know, the cost of them and insurance and warranties, like it's a whole different world. Um, and like dealing with insurance is not fun. Um, I will say that insurance does not want people to hear. I don't, I don't understand it. <laughs> they want to make as much money as possible yeah. and the healthcare they provide be damned. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's does that affect like, okay. So when a lot of people go hiking mm -hmm. me, for example, when I did mm, PCT, I might've barely been on my parents' health insurance. AT, I definitely wasn't on my parents' health insurance. That yeah. one, now that we're four years removed, I can comfortably, without getting scolded, say I did not have health insurance for. Um, <laughs> I quit my job yeah. on a Friday. I started hiking on a Sunday. I yoloed the whole thing. 
Nice. And I know a no lot of- No traveler's insurance or anything? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I said, let's see what happens. She just went for um, it. Jewels. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, listen, it's been almost five years. We can <laughs> skim past that now. But I know for a lot of people that hike, I'm not the only one that does that. A, I will put my foot down on that. But B, I know there's a lot of people that struggle to figure out how to get insurance for something like taking time off to do a hike. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you can work with where it's like traveler's insurance or other things with your hearing aids? Or is that something where you need to like have a job that has this like corporate insurance type thing to be able to make sure that you have the coverage for should anything go wrong with these in the future like is this like yeah. binding you to like the corporate world kind of is yeah and that's kind of the sad part about it is yeah i do need insurance if i don't and something happens to them that's going to be not great um and so thank god i'm 23 and not 26 you got three yet. more years yeah yeah so i'm kind of i'm actually in talks right now because i just started a new job um and we're kind of thinking about do i just go on my own insurance now or I'm trying to lean towards to convince my mom, be like, hey, can I just stay on? Like, all my older older brothers got to. Why can't I? Yeah. If anything, you have you more know. of a need. Right? Exactly. So we'll see. Could you get sponsorships for it at some point? Like, is it like if I, if I hike a bunch right now and mm -hmm. I can kind of get the word out, then implant people that make this brand, like, mm -hmm. would sponsor me to be able to keep doing further things like this? Or are you... Like, is this like a road that you can ride until you're 26 and then you have to put health first? Um, I think I could get sponsors. Yeah, I definitely could. Um, it, it would be more along the lines of sponsorship um, to get insurance. Like, they would give me the, the money to be able to have insurance oh. kind of thing. Because, like, they wouldn't be like, oh, we're going to take you because we're the company that has cochlear implants. And, like, that would be cochlear because you know there's other medical expenses that could happen you know um and so like meaning just my stomach hurts i need some medicine you know um and so i couldn't just predominantly be under like cochlear's um sponsorship for that um it would be more along the lines of, along the lines of yeah hey here's health insurance <laughs> um and so yeah that's another thought process that i have for doing the pct um sooner hmm. so that i can do it without having an actual job yeah um and so yeah. that makes sense i know part of the inspiration for doing the ct was to inspire others who are deaf or hard of hearing yeah. to pursue their dreams have you had other people reach out to you since you've completed the ct mm -hmm. asking your asking you questions and just saying that they were motivated by your journey yeah i've had a couple people actually uh, it was more like parents of kids um and so actually um last weekend i uh, did a fundraiser with the Listen Foundation. Um, and so what the Listen Foundation does is basically they help families who are deaf and hard of hearing and their, their kids have um, an implantable device. Helps them get uh, auditory verbal therapy, all the resources that they need, help pay for stuff. Um, and it's a really great organization and it helps that camp that I grew up attending and now volunteer for. Mm. Um, and so uh, when I was at that event, I had a couple parents like come up to me and be like, hey, my kid wants to go backpacking now because you've done this. Hmm. My kid wants to start playing guitar and because you, you play guitar, you know, and all this stuff. I was playing guitar for the event, basically. Let's talk, talk about that because I've got a note here about your guitar oh, playing as yeah. well. How does that inter or interface with being hard of hearing or does it? Like it, the fact that you're a good guitar player, is that independent of the fact that y you have this deafness or um, do you think – how does it interface, I guess, is the simple yeah. way of asking the question. I actually started playing guitar around the same time I got my second implant. Um, and that was probably around yeah, five or six years old. Um, and I guess I, I like challenges. And I just <coughs> guess I took it as a challenge and just went for it. And it also got, stems from the fact that, you know, my grandpa, he's really into the blues. And I grew up going to a lot of concerts. And that kind of bred me into being a guitar player. Um, but to answer your question, um, no, I don't think it really interfaces much. It's just really um, becomes more challenging, I guess. Mm. Um, and I've gotten to the point with my guitar playing that it, it's a stress reliever more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I really enjoy it. Mm. What style of guitar do you play? Um, electric, acoustic, um, mostly blues, though. I, I really like the blues. <laughs> do you play 
solo or in a band and is it difficult playing with a band because you mentioned previously being able to like discern different mm -hmm. uh, audio inputs can be a challenge yeah it is I, I mostly play by myself but I am looking for a band right now I played in a band for I think a year and a half in college my last yeah senior year of college um, and what I learned a lot through that is the bass and the drums help a lot so I kind of have to like position myself to where I can like be right next to the drummer and kind of also next to the bassist and kind of like be able to actually feel their mm. um, their tempo hmm. and their rhythm. Have you ever tried playing without the implants in? Like oh, just yeah. going off of muscle memory? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, what's yeah, that yeah. experience like? Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know. <laughs> I don't I don't hear what I'm playing, of yeah. course. You know, it's um, more along the lines of, you know, I am more attentive to where my fingers are being placed hmm. on the fretboard. Um, and so actually I do that as a practice sometimes where I'll just play without being able to hear just so that I know that like I can feel every little note that my fingers are hitting hmm. um, and just feel the vibration of the guitar because I know when there's a certain amount of vibration on the guitar that I actually hit that note hmm. and so when I focus on that then I realize that I'm a more precise player. That's interesting. Yeah. I play to a lesser extent. And yeah, you know, when you're in the wrong part of the fret, like it feels wrong. Right. You, you know when you hit a bad note. Yeah. You play guitar? We've talked about this in a previous episode. But what, six years ago? It's been a long, I don't play regularly anymore, but I can competently handle a guitar. No, this is <laughs> and the fun. drums. Yeah, yeah, keep going. <laughs> just validating his point yeah, that yeah, yeah. you know when you don't get Zach it right. Zach just wants to yeah. be able to relate. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But Some I would say I play like a deaf person, but. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Heck. <laughs> <laughs> Probably better than me. Yeah. Zach's no, getting canceled not. on this episode. Yeah, I canceled every episode. Um, okay, with what you were talking about with the insurance and the cost of these and all the ways that they can get fucked on the trail, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like the outdoors is the most accessible place for someone with a hearing issue. And is that... Like, is there something that the outdoors, I'm saying the outdoors in like a broader scene, like the broader scheme of the outdoors. Mm -hmm. Is there something the outdoors in general can do to make the outdoors more accessible to people with hearing issues? Or is this strictly like a insurance side of things where the outdoors is accessible enough, but it's the like hoops that you have to jump through on that end that are causing the headaches? Like what... Where's the middle ground? What can be done to make this something where people mm -hmm. who have implants for hearing can more comfortably get outside and enjoy it? Yeah, I mean, I'm actually really trying to think of ways this exact reason, um, because um, right now I'm a junior board member of the Listen Foundation, and I'm hoping through that I can kind of come up with a way to be able to bridge that gap, because there are a lot of families who, it seems like it's more the hoops that you have to jump through in insurance just consumes too much of the time um, and then too much of the time to be able to actually you know get your kid outdoors and be able to you know show them the true bliss of nature you know hmm. um, and so really I think what it comes down to is just the awareness um, and the ability to actually spend the time like taking your kids from a younger age early intervention is what they call it for getting your coconut implants earlier on when you're young um, and so basically getting them outdoors and making that mindset switch from, oh, I can't do this because of this. I feel like There's that's that got to be mindset. hard for the parents because, like, we, you look at kids outside, and I feel like when I think of a kid outdoors, if mm -hmm. I think about myself in my neighbor's stream when I was growing up, like, it's chaos. Right. Like, I just want to slap everything and mush the mud and, like, splash. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if I just dropped – bank on these implants for my kid and I take them outside and I see them being a kid outside like I'm having a panic attack inside about yeah. what if these things break fall out get lost anything mm -hmm. how do you even approach making that better because I feel like there's got to be just anxiety and stress mm -hmm. all around that yeah I think it's got to come down to the insurance because there's got to be more leeway of like oh I lost an implant and he's replaced you know there's got to be more um yeah, I think it starts at the insurance because then if you don't have that actual backing or that mental backing of like, oh, we're covered, we're good, if something happens, hmm. um, then I think that's where you'll start seeing that that shift. Hmm. Are there insurance policies that do it better than others? Like I know insurance mm -hmm. through what my company provides for mm -hmm. me. Like I know the brand that I have, but are there companies that 
do this better than others or are more accommodating, mm-hmm. you know, give more, yeah. are less hoopy. Yeah, I don't quite know um, specific insurance companies that are better than others, but I do know that like some families um, actually get Medicare um, just based on like their, you know, age and like the disability that they have and all that. Like I was on, or what is it, Medicaid or Medicare? Which one's for the older people? Um, Medicare, I believe, is for the plus 65. Because Medicaid would be the one that I had then. Uh, hold on, hold on. They could give the them more between Medicare names. and Medicaid. Medicare is the federal health insurance for anyone age 65 and older, mm-hmm. and some people under 65 with certain disabilities or conditions. Medicaid is a joint federal and state program that gives health coverage to some people with limited income and resources. Okay. So I, I qualified for Medicare because of my disability. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's a certain point that they say, oh, he doesn't qualify anymore because he can talk and he can hear. And so then I'm not eligible for that anymore. So they give you the hearing implant so that you can hear, and then they're like, he can hear now. He doesn't qualify? Yeah, basically. That's so fucked up. That's very fucked up. (laughs) so fucked up. That's very fucked up. And so we had to go on to our own insurance, you know, and so that's what I'm saying. Like, it's a really big deal because a lot of these companies that are, what they're doing is if your kid needs a cochlear implant, these insurance companies are, like, talking to the hospital and seeing how much business that this insurance company does with the hospital. And then they decide on how much profit that they want to make based on how much business Mm. that insurance company does with that specific Mm. hospital. Is there a way, like, let's talk about we're we're the listener, we're listening to this episode, Uh you know, it's come into a close. Is there an actionable way for us to do anything about it? Or is this just one of those, like, thank you, sir, may I have another's where, like, we're just getting, like, shit fed to us and we just got to eat it. Like, what can you actually do about it to improve the situation at all? Yeah. (laughs) It's tough because, I mean, without having to, like, go, I mean, I could go to Washington maybe and maybe get some bills passed or something to actually drive forward the change that needs to happen with our insurance policies. Um, Then I don't quite know. Um, Because, I mean, going back to just getting people outdoors who maybe have been limiting themselves who otherwise should not be limiting themselves because there was a switch that was flipped in my head that like said i'm not going to let this control what i want and don't want to do when was that um that was in middle school actually at the cochlear implant family camp i was uh rock climbing and Hmm. i was like man like what was stopping me from doing this before Hmm. um and from then on i just kind of had that same mindset of you know i'm not going to let my disability you know, affect what I want to do with my life. It's uh, really more the ability to not hear when I choose. Hmm. That's that's how I think about it. It also sounds like your mom is an awesome advocate in this because she's in the medical care system. Like she knows the levers that need to be pulled. Mm -hmm. Um, To that point, I recently, maybe this is an actionable tip for somebody listening to this, but insurance will shoot down a lot of the things that you try to do to benefit your own health. And I use chat GPT oh, really? to, because they said that one of like the blood tests that I was getting was not covered on in my insurance plan. Mm. And I legitimately input that test. And I, I forget the name of the uh, official form that you're supposed to file to protest it. But I put that into chat GPT and it spit out like a long letter. And like it had me <laughs> insert specific things that were true to my specific case. Um, but I was, and it ended up working. Oh. It ended up working. What did they huh. say? Just like, sorry. They we'll just cover ended up perver- So I, what I gather with health insurance, at least in my personal case, I can't speak to the broad spectrum or certainly Brady's case, but it seems like a lot of times if you put effort into fighting the stuff, there are enough instances where they will back down and accommodate you. I think they're used to people not fighting and just being bulldozed by the terrible system. But yes. if you do show some resistance there is a fighting chance i have this is money with katie again a great podcast if anyone's interested in that sort of thing but the money with katie stuff she had posted um just like one of the weeks when she was doing a deep dive on something was like the the different codes that they use for health insurance and how a lot of the times if you go to the doctor and you end up with a big bill if you look up the different codes that they plug certain things in for a lot of them are oftentimes like and egregiously so marked incorrectly and mm-hmm. like getting those fixed like they're apparently apparently this is like a thing where you can act i never knew you could push back against this stuff like yeah. i never knew you yeah. could be like i don't like this 
Yeah. You know, like you're just always told to just like, this is what it is. Yeah, suck it up and take yeah. it. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. Like, yeah. My mom just kept on pushing, pushing, pushing and finally got it. That's awesome. You know, and I'm, I am where I am now because of my mom. Yeah. You know, that's, that's great. Fantastic. It's good to have somebody who's in the healthcare world who understands the stuff because yeah. it can be so dis enheartening to just know that you're at the mercy of someone who's not connected to the healthcare portion of it at all saying that like no you don't actually need this like motherfucker my doctor tells yeah, I me could, I, I, mean, I would like, be yeah. mad and jaded i think like i don't think yeah. i could handle like you're very happy and from what i can tell just like you know positive but i feel like i if i were to face those roadblocks i would get very jaded and mad and not happy yeah. about things you which, know, i think that comes up to like how i was grown up how i was brought up because you know i had all of those hurdles that i had to jump you know, and I guess that kind of attributes to my personality now. It's just like, all right, cool, let's go. Let's see how we're going to handle this situation. Hmm. Um, and so having to be like bred into constantly having to go over hurdle, over hurdle, over hurdle, just to listen or just to hear, you know, I think that's bred me into looking at it in a positive aspect because hmm. otherwise what is life like? Yeah. Does that give you a leg up on things like through hiking where – like hurdles that would get other people down and considering getting off trail is just like another day in the life for you. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't like to say, Oh, I can't do that. Or because of this reason, you know, I, I like to think things through and be like, Oh yeah, I can do it because, well, maybe this will happen, but okay, let's see Let's go for it. Hmm. You know, and it's just that mindset. Okay. So to wrap the interview here, uh, we're going to dive back into this box. You're gonna pull what you're out doing. your favorite item from Ooh, your folks. favorite freeze dried candy slash. I'll narrate for the listeners. Um, Brady's stepdad freeze dries um, candies and other things. There's some ranch green beans in here, so I can't exclusively say candies. <laughs> but these all look fire. Don't give me bananas. <laughs> I like bananas. Just they look like they look like the dehydrated bananas, and those are a no for me. The, um, they are better than the dehydrated bananas. All right. I'll, if you say they're better, I'll try them. Okay. There's a lot of interesting things in this box. I don't know. I will say shout out to my mom um, for she literally overnighted this box. So that's that awesome. Was insane. I, so, <coughs> you but, said it, it was Harvest General Store, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Harvest General Store. They just do like trade shows and stuff in Iowa right now. But um, my favorite is the uh, smoothie Frittles is what they call them. They're just oh, these are the Skittles. Skittles. Bust them open. Let's, yeah. let's have a couple. Yeah. I'm like clapping. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yay. <laughs> John's happy. I didn't even ask myself to clap. I just started clapping there. You said the red ones are the best? No, I just said like the smoothie ones are my favorite. I, th I think all Skittles taste the same, to be honest. But isn't that Whoa. true? Isn't it's, a, like it's a pet peeve for listeners to hear us chewing, so apologies. But we're doing it. This is fun. <laughs> this feels different. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's the right reaction. I, I feel think. it under my chin. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say I actually like that way better than a regular Skittle. That's yeah. damn good. That's what's all over my TikTok is people are making these in their microwave. Yeah. It's like a Skittle that exploded and became... I don't oh, even another. know how to describe it. I don't even know how <laughs> to yours. describe the texture. <laughs> that is delicious. Here, I have another. Oh, I got two. And I grabbed a yellow, which is usually my least favorite flavor. Orange is good because they taste like orange Tic Tacs. And orange is the new black. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. Uh, yeah, these are all yours. These are awesome. Wow. These yeah. are really good. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, another shout out to Harvest General Store. We'll include the. It was. Can you? Can people order this on the Facebook page, or is it even? Are they even delivering? Uh, right now, they're in the process of setting up a website. Okay. Um, you can't even buy it right now. <laughs> I mean, right now you can message them on Facebook, and maybe they'll send you something. Okay. But, cool. Um, yeah. In the process of setting up a website. <clears throat> Brady, is there anything that we haven't asked you that you'd like to relay to the listeners of Backpacker Radio? Not really. I mean, I would think we've pretty much covered it, but I will say um, just because you have a disability doesn't mean that uh, it should limit what you want to do with your life. Um, and, you know, just being able to talk here right now. And, you know, I never would have thought that I would be talking on a podcast or having a conversation on a you know, media that is predominantly listening. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just amazing technology. It's amazing for, you know, my audiologist. It's amazing for, 
my auditory verbal therapist. It's everyone in my life that's culminated to this moment. Um, and so really thank everyone in my life and in my family and for where I'm at now. Here, here. I'm so impressed by the technology mm. of this, like uh, honestly blown away. And even talking about like the enhancements above what you can get above just typical hearing yeah. is honestly pretty exciting. And like, this isn't even for me. Like it's, it's pretty, it's, it's mind boggling. It's very yeah. cool. And what's really nice is, you know, as I get older, I'll be the only one in the nursing home who can actually hear. Whoa. Wait, do these not work for people when you lose your hearing? Like if I were to listen to headphones on too loud and then my hearing slowly goes, oh, well, these wouldn't work for me? I mean, they could. It's just, it's like an all or nothing thing. So if you get the cochlear implants, you're not going to have any hearing, mm. wow. actual hearing. Yeah. Damn. Well, yeah, these are superpowers. Shout out to the technology, but also you, Brady, like you're, you're a testament, you're an inspiration. Uh, sure. Really grateful that you could come on to the podcast and share your story for listeners, whether they have a disability or not. I think it's a really interesting story to share. So thank you for your time and sharing your journey with us. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. To the Trek propaganda portion of today's show, you're going to like this one. We're not doing question of the day? Uh, we're going to do that afterward. Oh, okay. I'm just going off of the show notes here. Uh, Trek propaganda. This is. Oh, I thought you said triple crown. Ignore me. Yeah. Guys, it's Did my I first... say triple crown? I don't know. Maybe I just heard that. It's my first episode. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this one is titled Broken on the AT, Gear That Breaks at 2,000 Miles and Gear That Doesn't. The thing that you're going to like about this is the author. This is written by no none other than Abby Evans. Queen, fire, <laughs> salamanders, right? Uh shit i forget she had like shit water uh, yep they had shit water queen of the salamanders yeah she, no shit water fireball queen of the salamanders shit water fireball queen of the salamanders yes that's, i'm such a good friend that is actually very impressive um you helped me by saying shit yeah well i always do this obviously is just one person's perspective on the subject but if you're curious to know which of abby's gear broke toward the end of her hike and which end of their hike and which did not which stood the test of time head to the link in the show notes this one was really well done uh the reason we're bringing this up is we had a chance to hang out with abby at trail days abby was a trail correspondent she they volunteered at the booth was and abby. was just genuinely generally a very good hang and good times participated in all of our pizza parties yeah that's right um, I have a couple of other posts here, but we've got a stacked segment lineup for today. So let's get right to that. Uh, transitioning to today's question of the day. I don't like that Rachel included the examples because one oh. of the examples was something that I was going to include. But Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say one of the examples was something that you like. Because I also really would have included IPAs, yeah. had she not. Okay. Well, we're spoiling it, but... Okay, question of the day is, what are you convinced people are pretending to enjoy? Yes. I will say I do I do occasionally like an IPA. I like some IPAs, but the IPA culture in the last, like, 15 years has gotten completely out of hand. It mm -hmm. went from being this, like, really rare specialty beer that existed well at a few breweries to now it's like you go to a brewery and it's 80 percent of what they make they have slight variations whether you want it hazy or slightly fruity or whatever notes of hops etc um and this is coming from somebody that generally pretty much likes ipas but it's just totally out of hand nobody likes ipas that much yeah i, I think, think it just seems cool they're good if it's in a flight like if i'm getting a flight of beers and you're giving me like four shooters of different kinds of beers I'll absolutely have one because I don't have to deal with it for 16 ounces. Um, a full glass of IPA, that's too much IPA. After a long day hike, you get back to the car, you've got an IPA sitting on ice in your cooler. That's I could easily deal with a 12 to 16 ounce IPA in that circumstance. But thinking about like going to the brewery and downing three or four IPAs, shoot me in the head that's yeah. too much ipa i mean i would drink anything cold after a long hike like i would drink True. cold pee after a hike would you no <laughs> but i mean it depends on how long the hike was and how much i needed to hydrate what is the mileage that would what's your threshold you know i considered it on the colorado trail when i ran out of water yeah same um job i had to talk me out i've of gone it. i did eight miles on the pct up by moraine lake um without water that that one i was close um, the Colorado Trail one, I ended up drinking. Eight miles without water. Yeah. Um, and then That's a lot. It was a lot. It felt a lot. The Colorado Trail, I ended up 
calling a taxi to pick me up and take me into Salida. Um, and I drank the river water and slept next to a trailer in a trailer park and got yelled at in the morning. Like I was that yeah. level of desperate. I suppose if you're that desperate, just do it. And because it takes a while for Giardia to take hold anyways. So I'd rather deal with the ramifications of Giardia in three days and not die of dehydration right. or even just suffer for being that level of thirsty because then you can go to the hospital, you get all the IV bags, yada, yada, yada. That's a later problem. I mean, if anyone has to choose between Giardia and dying of hydration yeah. or any other reason. I, I doubt you'd, it'd have to be pretty severe to... I don't think I've heard of anyone dying of dehydration in the context of through hiking. Mm, are you sure? I feel I, like the desert I mean, and the PCT we've had. It's possible that people who've gone missing have died that way, but or I don't think... I guess those are heat stroke too. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways, so I would have an IPA if it was cold. Yeah. Um, but only in one. But of it's those. somewhere in the same power ranking as piss. If I have other, op- no, no, because let's say like I'm at a event where everyone's having some drinks and all they have are IPAs, I'm not gonna just like, um, not partake. This should be a triple crown at some point. Maybe we've done it, but give me your top two beer varieties. Okay. I like light and fruity is usually what I'll say if I'm going to someone okay. to order and it's I don't like know a, the menu. Like a wit beer, wheat. I like wheat beers, wit beers. I like Hefeweizens. Mm-hmm. Um, I like, I actually like like some stout and porters, but it has to either be cold and snowy or again, the um, flight scenario. I also like fruity beers. I'll go for a goze or sour, whichever one that is, but I don't. I can't do a whole pint of that either. Just like yeah. that sour. Yeah. I'm a, I like just classic beer. I like Mexican lager. I like, like Pilsners. Amber. Ambers and can amber be really ale. good. The few places where I've had cream ales, that tends to be good. Steve Chauncey is a cream ale man. Yeah. He, um, Genesee cream ale. Okay. It is all, all we carried in the house growing up. What's the, um, the gold can shit? I'm blanking on the brewery. It's the, every, Liquor store in Colorado sells this. It's a popular. Never mind. I think we. Chorus banquets. No, uh, it's mostly silver with like a gold accent. I think it's a cream beer, but I could be wrong. Uh, Anyways, I'm sounding like a fucking idiot right now. Um, so the question of the day. <laughs> yeah. Question. Uh, things that you're convinced of. What are you convinced people are pretending to enjoy? IPAs is a good one, but we're n- neither of us are drafting that because that was the example given in our yes. show notes. I'm gonna go with. You go first. Okay, I've got options. Um, Oh, where to start? I'm going to go with anything cold in regards to backpacking, just to keep it relevant to the podcast. Sure. For example, cold soaking. Yeah. No one likes that. No one likes that. You could say you like that. You don't like that. You could say, oh, my diet. I don't care. You don't actually like it. Yeah. I think you're a liar. Yeah. Um, Cold camping. For example, like people that like backpack in shoulder seasons when it's really really cold and it's freezing when you get out of your tent and it's freezing when you get into your tent or you're going through snow no one actually likes that depends on the level of cold for me the the threshold is if it's painful to grab the tent poles and i guess if you're using a trekking pole tent that's less likely to be an issue because you're like core candles or some other fabric uh, material um once it's uncomfortable to grab the temples, I guess you could just have gloves to solve that problem. But that's about my threshold. As long as it's not like stinging my hands to grab something, uh, whatever, like the carbon fiber pole, then I'm doing okay. I just, I can't ever enjoy getting out of a warm sleeping bag into like a freezing temperature and pretend that I'm having a good time. Yeah. But you can just start off by wearing, this is what I do is I just wear all of my clothes. Like I've got my down jacket on, usually like rain pants or wind pants, the leggings, and then like I'll slowly strip as I get throughout the day. So it's... I do that too. Yeah. Um, I still don't like it. Okay. Fair. That's fair. Uh, because you can't cover everything. Like when I started the AT, I wore my buff around my nose because my nose was the part that's Those cold. are really cold mornings. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's like... Sub freezing, I would agree with you. That's a that's a struggle bus sort but of. But like morning. Java doing the winter AT hike, you can't pretend yeah, you're enjoying that. that. Yeah, that's not. It's not fun. That's not three season. That's the depths of the fourth season. Yes. that I can fuck right off. So that's one of mine. Okay, uh, one of mine is IPA would have been my first choice. Yeah. So good good job to Rachel. Um, this is coming as somebody who consumes a mass quantity of this on a daily basis. Coffee. No, that's on my <laughs> list. Uh, yeah, I drink 
I'm up to like a half pot of coffee right now. It's bad. It's really bad. Like the first cup of coffee is just laying the foundation for the next cup of coffee. It doesn't actually do anything for me. Right. But without adding like sugar and cream, drinking coffee black, um, I've convinced myself that I like it because I am chasing the effect that it gives me. But I would never drink decaf. Yeah. I mean, I would never drink black coffee. Um, but even with the milk and sugar, th- no one can tell you that that tastes good. It's strange because I like coffee flavored things like coffee flavored ice cream is good. Espresso martinis are good. Sure. I've never actually had one, but sure. Oh, my God. <laughs> Palooza. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just like straight black coffee. The people that go and spend like six bucks on a really nice cup of coffee. Apparently Starbucks, certain Starbucks have something called a clover machine, which is like a it's a machine. I think it's worth in the five figures. It's very expensive. And uh, not all Starbucks have this. The ones that do, it takes a while for this cup of coffee to be made. It's more expensive than their standard cup of coffee. And it's supposed to be like an exquisite cup of coffee. I've had that before. And it was like, this is a slightly less bad thing. I enjoy the effect. It makes me productive, puts me in a good mood, wakes me up. But the taste itself sucks shit. I just, I think there is a Venn diagram to be made of the IPA enthusiasts and the black coffee enthusiasts. Here's I think question. there's gonna be a lot of overlap in that Venn diagram. Assuming calories weren't part of the equation, would you be more likely to drink a non-alcoholic IPA or a decaf cup of black coffee? No. You had to pick. Let's say Wait, what? You're, you're, we're in our PCT hiking scenario and remove the uh, temperature of the liquid that you're consuming, just going purely off of a taste basis. Your only options are decaf coffee or alcohol-free IPA. And this is black coffee? Yeah. I, yeah, no, I'd rather drink dirt. You wouldn't do either? I if you're do, like no, dying I would, do, I would do the IPA, absolutely. Yeah. I, I just, black coffee, I'm not doing. Yeah, I, I just, agree with you, by the way. I, would I, rather I drink only the started IPA. drinking coffee when I started the sales job because it, it's just, that's how you have to adapt. Yeah. Um, I have a friend who works finance, very owns a house, owns dogs, like very adult on a lot of levels, but he's also viciously addicted to caffeine, but doesn't drink any coffee products. No, he just I'll, drinks like those, uh, what's like the trendy uh, energy drink right now, Celsius. He yeah. Drinks a shit, he'll drink like two of those to start the day. Well, I'll do English breakfast tea. I like English breakfast tea with cream and sugar. Uh, milk and sugar i think that think has just as much recently. just as much caffeine yeah people was, are probably banging was, their heads on the wall i was tempted to pull out the ted lasso line and then the alarm bell went off that we had had this yeah, conversation to, like sorry to recently. everyone i apologize um but yeah coffee i'll have coffee in places where it's just easier to have coffee or sure like yeah it's just i went to the convenient. mechanic today there's free coffee there's free coffee in most places indoors in or the like United at States. work like yeah. they'll have coffee and I don't, i'm very particular about the tea like i don't want those little like peel top hazelnut vanilla french vanilla coffee creamers that you put in mm. so if a place only has those and there's no like milk option that i can put in my tea then I'm, i'll go for the coffee because mm. i'm not gonna have a bad cup of tea yeah yeah, I'm, this is coming from somebody that I even drink black coffee on a fairly regular basis because mm-hmm. by c- cup two or three, like I just don't want the additional cream or sugar. I'm just trying to get the caffeine in my body in the least painful way possible, and I don't like pills and all that stuff. Uh, so I drink black coffee, but it's gross. And people like nerd out on this stuff, saying that they love it, and I just I don't. I think they're lying. I've like I could go so far as to say I've tasted black coffee. I know what it tastes like. I've tasted it. I've had like a yeah. taste of it. Yeah. Never in my life have I ever just sat down and drank some. No amount of desperation has ever gotten me there. Yeah. Uh, I have a good friend who taught himself to like black coffee because he thought there would be enough circumstances in life where coffee was available, but the all the accoutrements wouldn't be available. So like he just wanted to be prepared prepared for such a scenario, and now he only drinks black coffee, but I think he's lying too. Yeah, I think he taught himself how to lie. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else you got on your list? Uh, my last one, because this is we're not even on the triple crown yet. My last one is this will probably be less controversial. Quinoa. 
Why does the word sound like a word I know? Quinoa. Yes, I know quinoa. It's like shitty couscous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know why, but for some reason, like the word was there yeah. and my brain wasn't connecting yeah. to it. I know it's supposed to be healthy, like high in protein. I like protein. quinoa. Do you really? I feel like it kind of like pops in your mouth a bit. It's kind of like bubbles. Yeah. It's, to me, I like the idea of it. I Have like, you fluffed it up with a fork? Uh, I, I think that's part of it. Like when you make rice, you're supposed to fluff it. Yeah. I don't know. I've never actually made quinoa. I've only had it like at the deli stand. Oh, okay. Or when other people make it. But uh, pretty much every time I've had it, suck shit okay um i just i think that's something salt could fix but to each their own yeah my last one is a classic for me and that's people that like working in the office prefer working in the office to working remotely Mm -hmm. i think that anyone who genuinely enjoys working in an office um might not um have other avenues of socializing outside of office like, you know, the people in the office where, like, work is life. My coworkers are my family. Sure. Like, live, breathe, eat, office. I came from startup culture, which yeah. is very much that. Um, I think they like office because without office, they just, like, don't have connections yeah. and get bored because they don't know what to do. Can I play devil's advocate? Sure. I have many social options. Not to brag or anything. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes the path of least resistance takes over and I just don't ever utilize them were if I were forced into a social situation, oftentimes I feel better. It's like working out. Like you don't want to work out, but you do. You have the option to go into office. So when you choose to go into the office, that's you free will choosing to do it. That's fun. I'm talking about the people that are proponents for return to office, like cut work from home, cut the option, everyone come back in. I think those are people that have been wildly lonely and haven't really done much to find a hobby there's a couple things happening here one is i think the people that run businesses uh would argue that people are more productive when you're not talking about them they've got ulterior motives i'm talking about your coworkers. okay so okay um yeah for me i think there's a ratio there's some sort of golden ratio like i think like one day in the office is the ideal thing yeah i think every day at home is bad i think every day in the office is worse i could do a tuesday and every other thursday Sure, one and a half days per week. Yeah. That makes sense. That would be good. A 30% work from the office rate. Yeah, and like the option to not, should I get to Tuesday morning and it's cold? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I could be on board with that. Anyway, I think the people that are all, let's go back to the office, all of us come on together now. Yeah. Um, I think they um, maybe don't have the most fun outside of work and that's what they get jazzed about. Yeah. I and will I don't say, think that's healthy. aside from you, the only person I work with is Billy. We've been on the show previously, True. the Trex developer. Um, and I like Billy, so this is not like a commentary or anything like that. But the days that we work together, which is rare, probably once every other week, sometimes a little bit more frequently, I come home in a much better mood than me just like sitting hunched over my laptop by myself, not talking to anybody for eight hours. Like that feels like the antithesis to what our organism needs. Yeah, but I do think we should also put the caveat like you're the boss. It's yeah. different. You can wear whatever you want. You don't report to I'm, anyone. I'm cracking the whip. Yeah, I mean, b- like Billy uh, works the tech for the Trek as a kindness. Tech for the Trek. Yeah. He he does not need the job whatsoever. His nine to five pays him handsomely. Um, anyway, um, that's mine. Cool. I like it. Uh, let's put a loop, uh, s- a segment buffer between that and the Triple Crown because that was a little bit beefier than probably it was expecting. I think we do that when we do early segments. Yeah, because I think too we much have so energy. much time. We're not like <laughs> watching the clock for 7 p.m. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> You're right about that. Uh, I have a stupid thing of the week if you want to okay. improv anything. My stupid thing of the week is so we're potty training Leo right now. Uh-huh. And to do this properly, to my understanding, is you want to do positive reinforcement. So any time that he goes in the potty, you want to make it really exciting in addition to like screaming and clapping and dancing and like getting him really riled up. Uh, I want to get him a treat. So what do I default to other than Oreos? I got Oreos. Within 24 hours, I ate a third of the entire (laughs) container, like double stuffed, like the family size thing of Oreos. I probably had 12 in the first 24 hours of me trying to get this as a reward for Leo. Just my ultimate fat boy took over. I, I have decent self-control with a lot of things. Oreo might be my biggest kryptonite. 
Yeah, those are hard. I don't Real. keep them in the house. Don't. Yeah, I, Leo might never learn to go to the potty because I've eaten all of his incentive. I mean, I don't know if you should. Should you reward them with Oreos when they use the bathroom? I think anything. This is not like I'm not going to give him Oreos every time he goes to the bathroom for the rest of his then he's life. Then you be used to it, though. Then you're going to be punishing him. No, there's a. Uh, it's the most rewarding schedule for this is called an intermittent <gasps> reward. Oh, you got something to say about that? I, but it's not yet. Yeah. Uh, so the it's not effective if you give somebody a reward each time because they have diminishing uh, psychological returns on that. If when you do an intermittent reward schedule that's when they actually when you get the most positive affect from that tactic interesting yeah um i saw a video on social media i can't remember which social media but it was someone who made a book that came with like stickers it was like a sticker book for kids learning how to use the potty Mm -hmm. and it was like different adventures they could go on and they put a sticker every time they use the potty to like accomplish certain things sure and there was like a bunch of different tracks for it it looked fun yeah. i watched this video from start to finish i know how to use the potty yeah but i was like this would be cool <laughs> sounds a little bit like an advent calendar is that what it's called yeah it's like an advent calendar yeah. for shitting yeah um i thought it looked fun <laughs> you should get it for him <laughs> Get it for him or... Yeah, put one in the bathroom over there. <laughs> Sounds like I know what to get Chance for Christmas. Yeah. I just want to feel rewarded. <laughs> I did it, Zaddy. <laughs> Zaddy, <gonna> come see. <laughs> All right. Uh, triple Crown. Yeah, we do have too much energy for, yeah. this, for the segments right now. Uh, this is the Triple Crown of things that are the new black. I think I pitched this as a joke, not thinking that it would actually... Ever Rachel make hears it. everything. Yeah, she does hear everything. She'll read anything on the prompter. Um, so, things that are the new black, the, the famous Netflix show, Orange is the New Black. Once upon a time, black was the black. Uh, so, things that are trendy, I guess, is the easy way of saying it. Yes. Where do you want to go on this? Because I got a lot. <clears throat> um, I don't have any that I... Th- I'm pretty confident that mine are unique. So if you want to go first, that's good with me. Okay. Um, I had to struggle to not have these all be like fashion. Um, Our prompt from Rachel is a prompt from Zach to Rachel to prompt him. First it was black, then orange. Now it's day drinking. So the day drinking means we can really go rogue here. Yeah. So I'll skip over the... We are drinking margaritas at 340. Yeah. Well, um, I'll skip over the aesthetic ones to try to give some more interest. Um... I think poop's back. Mm, did poop ever leave? Poop had, I mean, if you're a girl, poop leaves yeah, for a while because right. you go through the phase of boys where they're like, girls don't poop. Got it. Um, I farted on Garrett's leg the other day and he <laughs> panicked. <laughs> I was Is like, we're, sti- we're still, we're, no, but like I was sitting on like his leg. Mm-hmm. Um, so that part he wasn't thrilled about. Yeah. And I was just like, we care still. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're poop not, is back. you're not married and doing, all we this had, stuff. we had the whole Delta thing. Then we had the Delta skit on SNL. The Delta thing. Yeah. The Delta poop thing. You were obsessed with the Delta poop thing. What? You're not oh, Googling oh, 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 this. Oh, oh. You literally De- played the De- audio on the De- podcast. Yeah. Delta Airlines. Yeah. I don't know what why. What Delta do you know? I mean, it is a Greek letter of the alphabet. That's If someone says Delta, you immediately think of the Greek I was alphabet? Thinking, I was thinking like <laughs> military operations. Like there's a lot of things. that. That's weird. <laughs> um, then I've been watching Bachelor in Paradise. That was just something that came on the other day. I went, I got out of my Bachelor phase, but you back. It plays after Golden Bachelor, yeah. so it just is this something that's on. also the new black or no? Golden Bachelor could be the new the yeah. new black, but in Bachelor in Paradise, there's a girl who hasn't pooped in nine days, and they give her a poop timer, like a countdown. She has till sunrise to poop, or she has to get out and go deliver a poop baby at the hospital. Oh um, damn! Apparently, is it the, just because she's not eating because the producers are pumping her full? No, I think something time? in Mexico like blocked her up. Mm. She's eating a lot. They gave her a poo poo platter to like make a joke of it. Yeah. Um, but she's all stuffed up. We had a do- they had a doctor come on to talk about like the size of poop babies they've delivered in these scenarios. Yeah. Um, Can they just give X lax? Why are they making? Why are they? They f- did. Like okay. it still doesn't come out. They've wow. exhausted all options. Anyway, so that was a major plot point. Yeah. Um, our book, plug. Yeah, it does. Um, poop. The moose poop story I sent you the other day of the girl who makes art out of moose poop. Oop, don't you're just spoiling a segment. Never, all I'm saying yeah. is poop's back. Yeah, poop is back. If poop ever left, it's back. Yeah. Uh, so you could say that brown is the new black. <laughs> brown is the new black. <laughs> nice. Okay. 
I like that very much. For me, poop never left, but I, if other people are on board with it being in, sign me up. Uh, my first one is, I don't even know what this is. Like, I know what it is, but I don't know anything about it. I just have seen it everywhere of late. That's Dutch Brothers. Yeah. Or Dutch Bros. I had a rep who was obsessed with them. I feel like I've went my entire life without seeing one, and then within the span of two weeks, I saw a dozen or more. They're overrated. Is this a new chain? No, there is. Um, I think it's like a mid, a southern Midwest thing. Is my guess. Not upper Midwest. I can tell you that much. Well, the girl that was obsessed with them was from Texas. Okay. But there was one that was in Grants Pass, Oregon. There was one that was literally around the corner. Like I could see it from my apartment, from my old place. Never in a million years did I think to go. Yeah. And she Googled the ones that were within like a 30 mile radius of me so that I could try it and saw that it was that close and got like offended. Yeah. Um, Is this better or worse than Dunkin' Donuts? And I'm, cause I know Dunkin' Donuts obviously has like it's cult following people from the East love Dunkin' Donuts. I only had it once. That was to just like make her happy. Um, How they was had, it? What'd you get? So it's a drive through or yeah. a walk up. Okay. It's like a little, like it's so like a little shoe box. Yeah. No, it's a shoe box and you either walk up to it or you drive through it. So the drive through is really long and they have a lot of options. Is it just food or is it just drinks or do they have food? I don't remember. Okay. Um, I just remember they had a lot of options. I was really overwhelmed with the choices because that made it hard for me. And I panic picked something and it was absolutely fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, and like, I don't go to Dunkin' Donuts and think like, this is great. You yeah. know, like I also leave Dunkin' Donuts and I think this is absolutely fine. Yeah. If that. Yeah. Um, That's some, a good way Sometimes to less it. than, but. It's a reliable donut. I'll give it that. I've never gone back. That was like three years ago. Okay. Um, yeah. I think it's just one of those things that so many things touch you in your childhood. It just becomes ingrained as having sentimental value. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> that look that look okay uh nostalgia nostalgia is the new black apparently yeah. and nostalgia's always been the black but uh there's a lot of things that we could talk about <laughs> it certainly is. uh so i'm just curious if the fascination with this place are, are people that grew up around it and it just reminds them of their childhood i think it's the same tim hortons crowd yeah. from a different demographic not yeah. demographic but like area right it, does area fall under demographic uh, geography is that part of demographic? Um, yeah, geography is okay. A, yeah, from a different demographic. Yeah, it's usually not what people mean when they say demographic. But, but Tim Horton slaps. Let me tell you that. Is it good? Yeah, Tim Horton's rocks. Do, they have the best. Do mac they and exist cheese. outside of Canada? Yes, Northern New York. Okay. We actually couldn't have a Starbucks in my college town because we had a Tim Horton's. Um, apparently, they have like I a deal. Compete. Yeah, yeah, at least that's that's like the old wives' tale. Yeah. Um, but Tim Hortons. So, so Tim Hortons <laughs> gets the one town in New York and Starbucks yeah. gets every other corner in the world. Well, they get all of Canada, right? Yeah. Yeah. All 12 Canadians, eh? Um, do, do I do two? Yeah, I do two. Okay. So what Dutch Brothers your, is the new second? black because it's everywhere. The Dutch Brothers is my first one. Oh, my okay. second one is this will be kind of a um, extension of our Patreon conversation, but this is very true for me in my world right now. Smashburgers. Mm. Not to be confused with the restaurant Smash Burger, which is fine, very fine. Uh, oh, you if, talked about Smash Burgers on the yeah, Patreon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the fast food restaurant Smash Burger is, I would say, good and nothing more, nothing less. Uh, but the genre of meal that is Smash Burgers, one I feel like has skyrocketed in recent years, and two. I'm fully on board. I'm fully on board with smash burgers. It is the superior form of cheeseburger. Unless you're going to like a nice restaurant where you can get like a really fancy like Wagyu beef, all the fixings on it. That sort of burger is will always have its place. But just like your run of the mill quick burger or even at like a decent sit down restaurant, smash burgers are the jam. And I can't see myself growing tired of a smash burger. I think it's here to say stay. I don't. <laughs> I'm kind of on the fence about a burger in general. Then I would say you're not qualified to speak <laughs> on the subject. You're not a big burger person. That's kind of crazy. I love chick chicken burgers, Chick Fil A. Um, Chick Fil A is good. Something I I like a burger. I like a burger. I can't finish one. <laughs> that's fair. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I don't know how else to I, say it. Yeah. It's just a lot of. 
a lot of that taste. I think I'm speaking to burger fans. I'm not yeah, trying not to, to evangelize right that people should like burgers, but the people that do like burgers, I implore you to give Smash Burgers a shot if you haven't already because they are good. They are damn good. You, am I interrupting your text session right now? No, I'm texting Sarah about clips she can pull from this oh, for okay. social before I forget. Yeah, good. Um, uh, so you're on your last one. Yes. No, I've you've given, you I've get given two. one. Your last turn is what I'm going to say. Okay. Um, this is gonna be a left field one for me, just because I'm I could do the triple crown of like aesthetic clothing clothing things. I don't think this is our audience. Yeah. Um, Keep them in honorable mentions, because I'm sure I have very important thoughts on the subject. Okay. <laughs> um, my second one is gonna be Red Zone. Red Zone is the new black. <clears throat> Reason why is because tonight. For the first time, if anyone's not listening on the actual date and wants to search when we actually watched this or recorded this, tonight they are doing Red Zone for hockey. Mm. First time they've ever done it ever. It's kind of a genius idea. Hockey Although, fans are going wild. Um, and by hockey fans, I mean my boyfriend. Isn't 80% of the game by the net? I don't understand. No, there's a lot of like, I mean, yeah, there's no, there's no Red Zone. I don't know zone. much about hockey. There's no Red, yeah. I don't actually know if they're calling it Red Zone. I feel like that wouldn't make sense. Um, but they're doing the red zone thing where they like show split screens, they show yeah. like all that Can for I, hockey. I'll give the context for people who are not football fans. Yes. Red zone is a channel which um, I think it's playing off the fact that fantasy football has become so popular. Seven it, hours of commercial free football. Yes, that. And it also, as the name implies, when a, an offense is in the red zone within the 20 yard line, uh, the game cuts to that. And I think it just prioritizes whichever game is closest to a scoring situation. Yeah. I That's think what gets precedence. The way you explained it, I feel like applies to the people that would already know what it is because you're using football words. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying the people that don't know what red zone is. But they won't know like 20 yards, oh. you know. Um, the teams that are close to scoring points, the the channel will switch to that game because yes. many games are being played simultaneously. A lot of a football game is going to be not scoring, just setting up to get to the scoring situation. This is just just airing the gate, the part of the game where somebody is likely to score soon. Yeah, it cuts the fat. It cuts the downtime. Um, it shows you when everyone's about to score. There can be like four screens in one, sometimes more. Um, but hockey's never done it. And so hockey today starts at 4. Last game starts at 8.30. From what I've timed, they usually run about three hours. Uh, my boyfriend keeps telling me they run two hours. I've learned that's not true. Yeah. So I, from my understanding, that's it goes from when you go 4 p.m. Well, last time we went to a hot, last time we went to an abs game, I got in trouble because he caught me listening to an audiobook. <laughs> <laughs> my hair was down, so he couldn't see my headphones in. And then he was, he was talking to me, and I couldn't hear him. He was like, he pushed my hair. He's like, "Are you listening to something?" And he picked up my phone. He's like, "You should be like, listening. I'm listening to the game, honey." He was like, "You're listening to an audiobook." Um, what a, a, I couldn't imagine a worse environment to listen to an audiobook. It's a low-scoring sport. Yeah, that is true, but it's high action. Not which is always. Why I'm Not always. Confused. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. so they're doing red zone hockey for the first time tonight, mm -hmm. it's 4 to 11, and it's all these games that are happening, overlapped, split screen, whatever you want to call it, and it is like enough of an affair where they have been talking about it all week. Like Garrett's friends coming over, they are making sloppy joes, they went grocery shopping for this. They, first off, kind of offensive, get really, really excited when I have the podcast because it's boys night. <laughs> um usually they use the time I mean, it's been a minute since you've recorded a podcast are you sure you're not falling behind schedule well you know what's funny is when his friend like really enthusiastically tells me to have a nice time when i go <laughs> <laughs> like i know why you're happy yeah. he's always really in a good mood yeah, have a great time or i'll come back and you'll be like so what'd you guys talk about like this is the friend and i'm like you had a good time yeah um yeah so they're having boys night tonight they are absolutely thrilled they've gone grocery shopping they've been talking about it for weeks and I can only imagine they're going to do more of these. Like, hockey's not just going to be like, let's try this once. Yeah. Fun Christmas special. Let's move on. Right. Um, so I see I see Red Zone being the new black. Sure. As it branches into other sports. My last one. We're all kind of aesthetic here, but I'll go for the one that makes me um, happiest, which is gingers. I think gingers are back. Mm-hmm. Um, not Us. back, but the new black. Yeah. Um, Another orange is the new black. Yes, yeah, a different kind because 
first in makeup people started drawing on like little freckles over the bridge of their nose mm-hmm. that was a trend for a while okay. um and then there's like a strawberry type of look that people have do on tiktok and that's just like a blush that goes over your nose like instead of the sides of your face goes fully over and that's just like imitating our natural complexion mm. like there's been a lot of gingers posting like this new trend is just me waking up cultural appropriation um and i also had a friend from college post a new facebook photo um like a profile photo yesterday and she is now my hair color which i think is lovely so i think gingers are back yeah. i think they're in they're the new black people want to be us <laughs> <laughs> i accept sweet I wish I had any sort of evidence to say to the contrary, but it sounds right. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Yeah. It's the times of South Park are long gone. Yeah. The dark days are over. <laughs> Gingers No are more here. day walkers. You hear that, guys? Uh, sweet. That's great. Did I do three? I don't know. No, you have one more. I, you have one more, which means we went out of turn. That's okay. No, I did one. You did two. I did two. Now you get one. You're right. Okay. I'm used to going first. Anyways. <laughs> No joke there. <laughs> Bet you are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to end this with a backpacking specific thing. And I do think this is trendy, might be too strong of a word, but something that I've only seen recently. Um, tell me if you've seen this. Tell me if you've just heard this one. The, term, the Terminus photo, everyone's got one, right? How do you celebrate when you finish a through hike? I've seen a lot of Terminus shoeies. I did too this year. Yeah. And I vomited in my mouth every time. <laughs> Guys, that's that's not It is it is never not gross. In any context, <laughs> especially long distance backpacking, but sometimes you just gotta go I mean, we've talked about things that I think are grosser. Let me say this in my thoughts. As someone who got norovirus in Millinocket after yeah. summoning Katahdin, you still gotta travel home. Yeah, I don't it's not. The, it's actually, I would argue, one of the worst times to get sick. As <laughs> someone who was a dragging their hiking partner by the collar through bus depots while they were puking, to only think that they got home safe and like like me getting home safe, like I didn't get it, I eluded it. Yeah. To then start like, I got my flight changed from a non-major airline back to Denver at no additional cost to me. Which never happens. And it's because they tell how sick you were. I started throwing up on the phone call. They were telling me they had to charge me and I was like <laughs> accepting it, but I couldn't push mute fast yeah. enough. They felt bad enough that they waved it off. Like, don't do a shoey at the terminus. Yeah. It sounds like a Ferris Bueller thing where you need like the keyboard with the sound effects next to you just to yeah. get out of something. Um, yeah, no, that's really gross. I hope that's not the new black. Though I know this is thrown around as a joke often, and I don't know the validity behind it. Maybe it's true, but does the alcohol kill any sort of bad things? I think for foot stuff, it's more fungal versus I don't know what's happening with neurovirus. It's a virus, obviously. I the to narrow down the amount of things that you are ingesting out of that shoe is just too hard. There's something to it, though, because, like, you're done, you're so ecstatic. I celebrated my PCT through hike by jumping off of the Terminus and then uh, fast forward a few weeks and I tore my ACL. Like, that can't be connected. I mean, I'm, like, not the advocate for someone who doesn't do stupid shit. Yeah. You know, like, I do dumb things. It just seems like after something that monumental, you're willing to bite the bullet on whatever sort of ramifications come from it. If I were at the Terminus and everyone in my hiking party were doing <laughs> a shoey, I would also do a shoey. Are we going to do a shoey at Palooza now? I fucking hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the aggressive curse yeah. to the listener. Sean shows up with brand new shoes. <laughs> no, this is this goes down in my, like, same thing. I'm not eating eggs. Yeah. Um, I, eggs. I'm not going to do a well, shoey. Now we have to make a bet where that's part on the table. For the shoey? For the eggs or the shoe. No, I'm not. This is the eggs part again, where it's like I will Would drink you, the entire shoe. Are you beer. more likely to do a shoey than a raw egg? I drink the whole das boot. Different kind of shoey. But that was for the egg. Yeah. That was to make sure that no one gave me the egg. Would you rather drink an entire das boot or do a shoey? De- das boot every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna go back there. Anyway. Um, oh yeah, we got it. A shoey, for anyone who's not familiar, is where I believe you dump a full beer. I don't know the quantity I of think alcohol. It is a full beer. Yeah, into your used shoe and then drink said beer out of the shoe. Should that be what we do dust boot for this year? Out of our own shoes. Like a shoey out of our own. No, 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 no. We do dust boot as normal at that oh, place. Oh, but for a shoey. But the person who loses dust boot does a shoey. Now that um, the meetup is in Denver, it does open up a whole as world long, of possibilities. As long as Mara's sitting to my left. <laughs> 
drink eggs, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that. Uh, okay. uh, do you have any? I have one honorable mention. I've got several. Um, first one being the '90s slash 2000s aesthetic. I yeah. think that's back yeah. in more than I have just one clothing. That's very similar. Um, skinny jeans are out. Like bell bottomy pants are back in. Yeah. The wide flare jean is back in. I saw you wearing a wide flare pant leg that's the other day. Skinny jeans are out. I'm not gonna look like a loser. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just kidding. Um, the last time I bought trendy jeans was in high school and I, or maybe middle school even jinkos when your weight fluctuates you get to buy more jeans more often oh my weight fluctuates well, it doesn't it fluctuate fit. it would have to go in two directions for it to fluctuate but yeah. it's just going um like it's just everything about the 90s 2000s aesthetic is back like you get those videos of things they're posting in stores and it's yeah. just like stuff you th- thought would never come back but also I think this goes full circle with what I was saying before is I think it's just nostalgia no but also I think like the whole scene is coming back because think about Britney. I guess to your point, a lot Britney of people put out her rocking book today. the 90s stuff were not alive in the 90s or were barely alive in the 90s. But for the 2000s, Britney's book came out today. Yeah. NSYNC has not been on a major we're back thing since they had that song in the Trolls movie. Mm-hmm. Um, like everyone's waiting for them to release a concert date. Britney just slammed Justin in her book that came out. Ooh. That's all over the news. Is there any credibility to anything that Britney does nowadays? Yes. Um, she's out of her Wasn't she just like flailing knives around her young kid? Yeah, but as she said, they were sh- they were trick knives. Oh. Um, <laughs> and her kids aren't young anymore. But she said a lot of stuff in this book, like that she had an abortion with Justin, like all these things. And then Justin was putting out Crimea River and all this stuff. I mean, it's just all over my newsfeed right now. Uh. And it's mixed with all these other things. The 90s are back. The 2000s yeah. are back. The clothes, the people we're talking about, yeah. all of it, it's back. My honorable mention is uh, specifically semi-corny 90s music. Just 90s music in general. It's back. Yeah, like Spin Doctors. I think yeah. Spin Doctors is like the prototypical semi-corny 90s song. Should we keep up with our past episodes and play a clip? Sure. Do you know Spin Doctors? I do. Can you sing me a song before I play it? No, because I remember it being the name of something, but I don't remember the song until you play it. <laughs> I want to hear it. <laughs> I want to know it when you play it. Yeah, sure. I'll sing it when you play it. I know this song. Sing it. I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> I know this song. Okay. I believe you. What year were you born? 92. This come out. Well, you were you born? Eighty <laughs> five. Yeah, that's actually right. Uh, yeah. So nineties music. To your point, all of the nineties bands and two thousands are doing the reunion tours. I, this doesn't really qu- qualify for nineties, but I know Blink One Eight Two is like a big hot I ticket they item. Suck live. Yeah, I saw them back when they were in their heyday. And they played with Green Day. They were co-headlining a concert. And Green Day was so much better. It was it was especially bad because Green Day played before them. And to go from Green Day to Blink-182, I'm surprised that half the audience didn't leave. Well, I was going to get myself Blink tickets as a, like, make myself feel better for not shelling out for Taylor tickets. Mm. And yeah, I don't. asked Garrett if he wanted to go, and he was like, they suck live. Yeah. Um, Travis is really good. Travis is, like, one of the best drummers of all time. But, yeah, yeah. the cohesion of the whole thing is, mm. you can skip it. Cool. Uh, nice. One more segment before we get to the standards. This is, I I actually got this from a few places, but I'll give credit to Austin McDaniel. You've heard that name a lot from our Patreon supporters. Um, and should I introduce it or should I just play the audio? No, I think, well, say what the segment is called. Okay. This is, well, actually, before I do that, shout out to Polly. Start spreading the poop. (laughs) News. <laughs> Start. Let's play it one more time. Okay. <laughs> Start spreading the poop. <laughs> News. I didn't know what they said the first time you played that. I just thought it was that Start song. Start spread. So now it makes sense. Uh, Who's saying poop there? Great question. Probably Polly. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Probably Polly, but I have no idea. Poop is back. Yeah. So this is the second installment of Poop News. Uh, this again. This is this was sent to me by a few people, which means that it was it made quite the splash. But here it is. Clock. See, this is a poo poo clock, and what we did see is we took them turds and we crammed them in between the number there. So that's one thirty two, thirty three, thirty. Now over here we make fecal people, 
And depending upon the shape of that middle turds right there, we can do them with big boobs or guts or butts or long legs or short legs. See, because there's no two turds that are ever alike. Have you ever seen a turd, the two turds alike? Guess not. No. Get five <laughs> bucks a turd for these things. So I get jumping right up and down. I get excited when I see a turd. Instead of a cuckoo clock. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> um, I, uh, I recommended this person as a guest. Before I, yeah, remember I sent that to you? I was like, potential oh, yeah. guest. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I could get through that <laughs> with the way. Yeah. And she just says turd really aggressively. <laughs> yeah. So we'll include the link in the show notes here, but uh, what she's displaying is art that she's made out of literal moose turds. Yes. Yeah. So she's got a clock. She's got some sort of. Uh, this is re when I said poop is back. Yeah. Yeah. Poop is very much back. Um, I, I won't butcher <laughs> the video clip by trying to explain it other than you should watch it but yeah there are people out there with ideas and time can you just play a second of that again that was really like that was see this is a poo poo clock and what we did see is we took them turds and we crammed them in between <laughs> the, the number turds. there so that's one thirty two thirty three thirty now over here we make fecal people like and depending it. upon the shape of them middle turds right there we can do them with big boobs or guts or butts or long legs or short legs see because there's no two turds that are ever alike have you ever seen a turd the two turds alike no, get five Guess bucks not. a turd for the <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> I don't like yeah, that. Yeah, being trapped in that lady's house. I feel like she's already sold me something, and I haven't given her my credit <laughs> card yet. But she's just gonna take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's somebody that exists. That's a in that's a strong pitch. Uh, but she's making these things, which makes me think that people are buying them. So poop is back. I mean, brown is the new black. I, you could see those going as gag gifts for people with large budgets. Yeah, I sure hope that nobody gifts me literal I, poop. Don't yet. This isn't us baiting. <laughs> no one fucking sent us one of these for the studio. <laughs> no, I'm like, you you're like, I have no one, no one get me this. I'm looking around at all the things people have gotten us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, none of these are gag gifts. Like, everything that we have are legitimate, it's, it's cool actual things. kindness. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, definitely don't get Chance a poop gift, guys. You I'm not going to display a poo-poo clock anywhere. I've got, my, I've got my bird clock. Definitely it, don't send poop to Chance's house, okay? We're imagine. all on the same page. <laughs> oh, that would be an April Fool's joke if I gave your address and people just mailed you shit. <laughs> yeah, the issue is then... I gave your address. I am being doxxed. You are a buyer, not a renter, though. Yeah. I think you could get away with it for me with minimal damage. Fair. Not that you should. Uh, mailbag. I'll do this. You do the review. Okay. Dear the Trek, I was surprised, almost astonished to learn today that Zach hadn't already known about Trinidad, Colorado. Trinidad, Colorado is the sign to all Texas hikers that you finally made it out of flatland hell. R Raton, New Mexico is also an important city. There are legal ramifications in every area and Texas travelers who enjoy cannabis have to deal with it every single time. The cops there are also apparently well aware. It's time for you guys to have an episode about Texans coming to Colorado for our day hiking or backpacking adventures. Peace, Dr. Nate Jones. Um, I can't speak to Zach's lack of knowledge about our country that we live in. Yeah. But what I can speak to is us going to Texas. Um, we've tried it a couple times. We want to do a road trip there. If you know any Texas-owned brands. I was waiting for you to have fun facts about Trinidad, Colorado. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> um, this, is, this is a pitch. <laughs> this is absolutely a pitch. Cool. If you know anyone in Texas who wants to send us on a road trip, send them our way. Yeah. Uh, also. I want to get Zach on the Lone Star Trail. I think that would be I've a fun section I've, hike I've for been us. on the Lone Star no, Trail. No, I know. I want to bring you, you back. I want to bring you back. Kicking and screaming. Lone Star Trail is the new black. I think that would be a fun trail with, like, the normal water carry you'd have in the desert, but alcohol. Like, some mm. water still, yeah, but... Some Lone Star beers? I think that could be, like, one where you have fun with the games. Yeah, the problem is the hiking is so boring. Yeah, well, that's where the company... Yeah. The company makes yeah. up for it. Yeah, it was... Java was too dull for that hike, for sure. Oh, the underwear? That's true. <laughs> there was nothing too dull about that hike. Sarah, I want you to just clip that. <laughs> no, let me read you one of my DMs from when we last, because we've got time to spare because we're doing segments early here. Yeah. Um, also, let us know if you like these early segments <laughs> better or worse. Um, you Definitely. You can clearly tell we have more time to go off the rails here. Yeah. Um, this is, remember the conversation we had about the guy that wanted to be my sugar daddy? Yeah. Okay. This is what he sent when we mentioned that underwear photo of me wearing the, if you, what yeah. was it? If you like big tits. What was the name? Of, what was the underwear? Uh, who needs an ass when you got, no, yeah. who needs big tits when you got an ass like this? Yeah, exactly. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I got a DM from him in August 
Um, <laughs> hi, Chance. I'm eternally behind on BPR, but I just finished number 165, and you confirmed the existence of a photo of your post-AT dump truck ass. <laughs> this is relevant to my interests. <laughs> How much? <laughs> and I never answered. Did you realize you are just pouring gasoline answered. on the fire? <laughs> so the next day he said... There has to be a price. No, the best part is this is already on the internet. You got to pull it down and then charge for it. <laughs> They're some of the best. Uh, but you can't tell me that like boring hikes aren't better with games. Cause, like, <laughs> I like that that's how we ended up back there. This is years later. And that was one game. Yeah. Uh, more importantly, you should drain that guy for every penny that he's worth. Should I send him a price? Yeah. Should I say X amount for the dump truck ass? How yeah. much should I say? Um, go 10 grand. Why not? No, oh, no one's gonna pay ten grand for a photo of my ass that's on the internet covered in underwear. No yeah. one's gonna pay that. You gotta shoot your shot, Johns. No, I'm not saying ten grand for the dumb <laughs> don't, truck ass. Don't sell yourself short, Johns. This guy seems pretty horny. Can you reply to it? Oh, reply. Ten K. Ten K sent. <laughs> Uh, Johnson with the margarita is a good time. Let's no, go. We just got a lot of time here. That's My true. tooth hurts. It's time. It's time and sore teeth. We've got 22 minutes before our guest even comes. I gotta comes. go pick up pizza. Oh yeah. Okay. Best podcast ever. <laughs> um, this is by NGTUJ. I love the show. It's actually the only podcast I can listen to. I'm not a through hiker, more of a weekend warrior, but I find a lot of the information valuable. And of course, the show is very entertaining. I mostly hike in the Adirondacks, New York. I'm hoping maybe someday I'll have time to hike the Northville Placid Trail. Until then, I get to live vicariously through everyone on Backpacker Radio. Um, like radical hand emoji, um, squiggly line, the diabetic hiker 46. I like that you get very precise with the punctuation. I didn't know how to describe those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sh thank you to the diabetic hiker 46. We are hopeful to make it to Chance's old stomping grounds sometime in 2024. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Read the Texas part earlier, but Northville Placid Trail. Um, we're trying our darndest. Yeah. Uh, if you know anyone in the area who wants to send us there. Um, I think it's going to happen this year. I got Next good vibes year. too. It's a big year for the Northville Placid Trail. They're yep. celebrating an anniversary, yep. a milestone. Um, and, I and, know and Orange is the New Black, so I how think, could they not bring I think in? the Northville Placid Trail could be the new black of short trails. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We're hearing it more and more. Yeah. We didn't even know it existed three years ago. I have to go to our Patreon account to make sure that I'm getting everyone na everyone's name. Because I learned in the most recent Patreon episode that we weren't including the current list. So somebody's fired. Okay. It can't be me. I'll DM Rachel and say, hey, is Zach crazy? Yeah. She'll respond with, of, of course. <clears throat> Thank you to our Chuck Norris Award winners on Patreon. That is Alex and Misty with Navigators Crafting, Andrew, Austin McDaniel, Austin Ford, Brad and Blair from 13 Adventures, <laughs> Brent Stenberg, Brian Alsop, Fables, Christopher Marshburn, Coach from Marion Outdoors, Dane, Ish, Derek Cook, Eric Casper, the friendly ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Erica Hoffman, <laughs> Greg McDaniel. He forgot her to his name. Iron Hike Endurance Productions. I think that was the one that we missed last time. Uh, or previous times. We Unless said it new. on the Patreon. I think they are new. Yeah. I'm, my concern is that I don't know when he started supporting us. If anyone's nickel and diming us on these mentions. <laughs> no, no, no. I think that's what's happening is he's been supporting us for a long time and we haven't been including his name. So now we have to say something very nice. Okay, about wait. Say Iron, it again. Say Iron it three times hike, like it's... Um, like Iron it's Hike Endurance Productions. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yeah. Iron Hike Endurance Productions. Iron Hike Endurance Productions. Wow. I wonder what they what they do at Iron Hike Endurance L Productions. What are they producing? <laughs> what are they producing? <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. Probably go look into it a little bit. I bet they yeah, produce really cool stuff. Let's yeah. Iron Hike Endurance Productions. Okay, what do we got here? Ironhike.com. Uh, the little Google Google snippet is the Iron Hike Endurance Series at Mohawk Mountain. I hope that I'm shouting out the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> is a single or multi-day event that is part hike, part trail run, part group camping trip, part one of the hardest damn things you've ever done, and full-on badass mountain foot slog. I don't know if I've ever heard foot slog before. Uh, so I hope that is relevant to Wait, no, we've got an Iron Hike Endurance Productions on YouTube. Oh. Now, now we get to actually confirm. Um, Iron Hike Endurance Series? Is that what I just shout out? I don't know. Yeah. I think we're good. 
So shout out to Iron Hike Endurance Productions. Thank you for your support. Yeah. And sorry for the negligence. Liz Seeger, Matt Sukup, Mike Poizel, Patrick Ciancialo, Sawyer Products, Spam, Timothy Hahn, so Tracy Trigger. <laughs> for some reason, <laughs> Uh-oh. I don't know why I thought this, but for some reason when you said Liz Siegel, <laughs> I almost said barely know her. Liz Siegel? Yeah, I, almost, I don't know. It, it doesn't even rhyme. Yeah. Is there I a just, joke? No, I was just trying to remember <laughs> all my things. And for some reason there, I just almost said barely know her. I think now we have to incorporate Liz, Liz Seeger. <laughs> barely know her. <laughs> you can follow us at Backpacker Radio on Instagram and TikTok at Backpacker Pod on X, Facebook.com slash Backpacker Radio. You can follow Johns. Hi, I'm on Instagram at Juliana <laughs> underscore Johnson. And you can get my book. I gave her one more long. It's like, I'm really in friends on Amazon. Hey, yikes. Uh, Appalachian Trials and Pacific Crest Trials if you are prepping for either of them trails also would be great greatly appreciative of a review okay we're not we still have a whole interview to go follow us on YouTube we're doing videos Hi, YouTube. Internet. Uh, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts Spotify or wherever you consume podcasts and that is it for today's show thank you so much for listening and iron hike enduring <laughs> this podcast that's it for today's show happy hiking bye